great games, great moments on NBC. Gracie got a play action pass. Going deep to Warfield. He's got it. He's on the way. They will not catch him. Touchdown, Miami. Brooks again finding the hole in a race with LaPette. And LaPette was not able to hang on. Brooks refusing to go down. the snap. Here comes the pressure. The kick is blocked. And it is three down at the 15-yard line. The Colts pick it up. Indianapolis may win it. And today on NFL 86, Samad Rashad on the resurgence of the powerful Bengals offense. Paul McGuire, as ever, with his inside look at the NFL. And Frank DeFord actually has some nice things to say about Cleveland. Hello again, everyone. I'm Bob Costas. This is week 15 of NFL 86. First of all, Mets pitcher Dwight Gooden was arrested last night in, temp in Tampa and charged with disorderly conduct, resisting arrest, and battery on a police officer. Gooden was driving one of two cars pulled over by police officers who said they saw the cars weaving. A scuffle then ensued. Four men, including Gooden, were arrested. Gooden and two police officers were taken to a hospital, treated for minor injuries, and released. It's been a troubled year for Gooden, as you may know. He's been involved in a number of minor off-field incidents which have made headlines earlier this year. Now to the playoff picture in the NFL. We'll start with the NFC where it's more clear-cut. After the Redskins' loss at Denver yesterday, the Giants have clinched in the East. Washington will host a wild-card game. The Bears are champions of the Central, but they and the Giants still have incentive because they're playing for home field advantage should the two teams meet in the conference championship game. Now, the Rams haven't clinched anything, including a wild card yet, but they need just one more win of their own or a San Francisco loss to wrap it up in the NFC West. Now let's move over to the AFC. Well, those are wild card possibilities. Dallas, merely a mathematical chance. The more realistic possibility, either Minnesota or San Francisco, will take the second wild card. Now we move over to the AFC, where all these teams are in the hunt, but only Denver has clinched anything. Denver is the champion of the AFC West. The rest of these teams are all in the chase, at least for wild card positions. Now, New England, if they win today at home against San Francisco, will have a game lead over the Jets in the AFC East. The big game today coming up on NBC is the game in the AFC Central, that one between Cincinnati and Cleveland at Cincinnati. If Cleveland wins that, they clinch the AFC Central. If Cincinnati wins it, they forge a tie in the division with the Browns, but they'd have two victories over Cleveland. They'd have the tiebreaker, and they'd have the inside track on the division crown. Now, one of those teams still alive in the complicated AFC playoff picture is the Kansas City Chiefs. Let's go out to Los Angeles. The Chiefs take on the Raiders there today, and the dapper man you're looking at is Deron <laughs> Cherry, outstanding defensive back of the Chiefs. Deron, your team is 8-6, and six, and you've got a chance. If you win your last two games, and they're tough, on the road with the Raiders, then on the road against the improving Steelers next week. And if Cincinnati loses one of their last two, you get a wild card. That's right, uh, but the key thing for us today is to beat the Raiders. It's going to be a tough physical football game, and we can't worry about what Cincinnati's going to do uh, at this point uh, in our season. We just have to be concerned about us beating the Raiders here today in Los Angeles. A physical game or maybe a dirty game? We know the history of not only the Raiders overall, but their games with you guys, including earlier this year in Kansas City when Greg Townsend drew the suspension and there was a, a fight, a big fracas that took place. We're taking a look at some of the footage of that right here. What are the feelings between the two clubs? 
Well, I think uh, the Chiefs Raider rivalry goes over a number of years. I mean, it's very intense. It has been. And, you know, it's a very physical, aggressive type of football game. And uh, earlier this year, we had uh, a really physical game where a couple players got thrown out. Uh, we just have to be able to keep our poise in the game and uh, not worry about them uh, trying to intimidate us. I think the Raiders are going to come out and try to intimidate us. But as I said, a lot of it will be directed towards our coach, uh, John Makovic, because of the things that he said in the paper. But the game is going to be played on the field between the two teams and the players that are involved. And uh, it's going to be a great game. Let's ask it plainly. Are the Raiders a dirty team? Are they a dirty team? I think they play overly aggressive at times. Uh, they play dirty football. But, you know, the Raiders have been doing that over the course of a number of years. That's just their style of play. You just have to, you know, like they say, when doing Rome, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. You have to go after them um, the way they go after you, and that's the only way to beat the Raiders. Are they the only team that plays that way? Um, there's a couple other teams in the league that like to play physical, but uh, none as much as the Raiders. And I think basically when the Chiefs and the Raiders play, it, it just seems like it's always been like that. And it goes back to the years when, you know, Buck Buchanan and Willie Lanier were playing with the Chiefs and uh, Jack Tatum. Uh, those guys uh, really played a physical game and it's lasted over the course of the years. And uh, now into the 80s, it's no different right now. So expect a physical game. Expect some fisticuffs out here on the field. Expect some shoving and pushing. Uh, that's just the nature of this rivalry. And in five seconds, who's your quarterback, Blackledge or Kenny today? Uh, I think Bill Kenny's going to start today for us. All right, Duran, thanks very much. Good luck today against the Raiders. If the Chiefs don't make the playoffs, they're 8-6 and six now, hanging by a thread. They will rue the losses earlier this year against the Cardinals and Bills, games they expected to win. We'll be back with Paul McGuire in a minute. NFL 86 is brought to you by the 1987 German-engineered Volkswagens and your Volkswagen dealers. By Taco Bell, the cure for the common meal. And by today's Head & Shoulders, for dandruff care that's good for your hair. It's your last chance to steal a deal on the full line of Volkswagens. Right now through December 31st, you can get a great deal on a Volkswagen Jetta, the best-selling European import in the U.S. Or make your best offer on a Volkswagen Golf. It's the best-selling car in all of Europe. Hurry in. December 31st will be your last chance to steal a deal on a Volkswagen. And missing out will be a crime. In the tradition of Christmas past, Zales brings you <laughs> the Christmas present. Gifts with style. Stunning diamond solitaire pendants and earrings. Now 20% off. These quarter carat earrings are just $1.99. And this one third carat pendant, $5.39. Zales Christmas presents. Buy now and pay nothing until April of 87 at Zales. Sharpen your sound with high-tech components designed to astound. Fine-tune your life with Emerson. Amazing new features, Ooh. the ultimate prize. Ah. Step into the future, we'll open your eyes. Fine-tune your life. Fine-tune your life. Emerson feels so right. Emerson, fine-tune your life with Emerson. Emerson. I have three grown children. One of them married, and I love Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Brave adults continue to challenge the notion that Frosted Flakes is just a kid cereal. Both my parents eat them. What if the kids at school found out? Because you love them as a kid doesn't mean you can't love them as an adult. With Dr. Coleman's help, we all can now admit we eat them, can't we? With that extra crunch in milk, that frosting just right, that tastes as good as ever. Frosted Flakes good? They're great! So dig in. They've got the taste adults have grown to love. Well, Paul McGuire is here, and I know you want to continue this Cold War with Jimmy the Greek, so I leave it to you. Well, you know, I've been taking a lot of heat this year about some of my picks. And Danny Sheridan, 
who is the odds maker for USA Today, brought this to our attention, and I think it's noteworthy. If you didn't see the show yesterday, there's an update on it, if you did see the show, because I'm now 50%, 24 and 24. The guy down the street is 14, 24 and 1. 50% to 37%. I think that story, that picture there, and again, this is from Danny Sheridan of USA Today. But, you know, when I look at that thing at 50%, do you have any idea how much money I've lost on the VIG alone? <laughs> yeah. And, and basically, at 50%, if you just dipped into a hat, you could do as well, right? I mean, the law of averages. It, it depends on whose hat you're dipping. Well, we'll leave that one alone and okay. see if you can improve on that break-even percentage. The big game of the day in the AFC... Cleveland, Cincinnati. We can't do two for two yesterday, huh? Okay. Cleveland, Cincinnati, that's, those are gone. Cincinnati's a three-and-a-half point favorite yeah, at home. They've I won know. five of the last six games between I the teams. Know. I know. But see, I played, I played pro ball with Marty Schottenheimer, so I'm taking Cleveland. But I'm taking Cleveland because I know you always shake your head when I do these things. Well, I don't understand that reasoning. I don't either, but I say these things. I don't understand them. Mac and Dickey will both have great games. Kozar will have a, a, a good game. But the guy today that's going to tear Cincinnati apart is Ozzie Newsom. He needs a good game. Today is the day. The only guy they're going to have to shut down is James Brooks. He will go over 1,000 yards because he only needs 35 to do that. But if you shut him down, I think you shut down Cincinnati. You know, they didn't stop Cincinnati at all. Kinnebrew went wild in week three at Cleveland, scored three touchdowns. Wilson and Brooks each had better than 100 yards last week against New England. I think the Bengals can power run these guys at home. That's why I'm the prognosticator and you're not. See, I'm the guy that says that they will not do that, Bobby. I'm just trying to add some spice I to it by challenging that. your point of view. The answer to that is Cleveland will win this game. All right, fine. New England, yeah. even though they're the home team, even though they recently had a seven-game winning streak, two-and-a-half-point underdog against San Francisco. Well, I, I just I, I don't like the fact that, that, that a home team is getting two-and-a-half points. New England proved that they are a quality football team by winning as many games as they did under man. They've got some people back again today. Lippitt's back and also James back. And he'll play uh, Tippett, excuse me. Tip, thank you, Ahmad Tippett. He's back and, and James is back. So defensively, they're going to be solid today. The one thing about San Francisco that scares me a little bit more than anything else is Montana is an excellent quarterback. We know that. And he's got Rice and Clark and all these people, Craig, to throw the ball to. The only problem is that they can't put it away. When they get inside the 20, they seem to just die there. And I think that that's going to happen in New England today. It's going to be cold. It'll be a little more difficult. New England will win this football game. All right, let's recap Paul's selections, and we also have some bonus picks for all you folks who are impressed by his 50-50 record for the year. <laughs> Cleveland is the selection at Riverfront, and if they do win the ball game, they'll be champs of the AFC Central. He likes New England at home against San Francisco. Here are the bonus selections. Miami has a mathematical shot at a playoff spot. Almost everything has to break right for them to get it. They get six and a half points at Anaheim. He likes them with that. He thinks the Giants will win big at home today against the Cardinals as they continue their quest of home field advantage against the Bears. Giants have already clinched in the NFC East. Dallas a six and a half point favorite at home. Give away those points against the Eagles today. And now we'll be back in a moment, but first it's time for another edition of Beginnings featuring Jet Run Running back, Freeman McNeil. Old Spice presents Beginnings. Brought to you by Old Spice Fragrance, the unmistakably masculine scent. Sponsors of the Old Spice NFL Rookie of the Year program. Freeman McNeil remembers his beginnings at Banning High School in Wilmington, California. They gave us the nickname of Black Cloud because we had black uniforms and we just hovered over people and, I don't know, just overwhelmed the high school football world. A scouting report on myself, almost quick. The first thing that I would try to do was get to the outside. In other words, uh, get on the right side of the tackle or to the extreme left of my left tackle. And that way I was able to choose holes and uh, see holes in the defense, which helped me out a lot. I have some great memories. Um, but the best is the pleasure to be, at least at one time, a part of something that has turned out really great. What kind of man whistled the Old Spice tune? He's my daddy. My practically perfect husband. He's a friend. The Old Spice man, a man's man. Clean, refreshing Old Spice. It's the favorite scent of the American man, and he'll never change his tune. And I love him for it. Old Spice. Vote for the Old Spice NFL Rookie of the Year at participating stores.
Tonight, this place will be filled. People will be watching movies and not watching what they're eating. Pretty soon, it'll come back to haunt them. My tummy hurts. Mine too. That chili dog. Don't worry. We've got Pepto at home. Pepto-Bismol. As it coats, it soothes heartburn and upset stomach, as well as diarrhea. I thought we left the monster back at the movies. It's only ah. Pepto-Bismol. The one that coats is the only one you need. When it comes to stocking up on toys this Christmas, W.C. of Cooks, that's me, is making sure Cooks stacks up. I know what kids want, and we've got it, at prices lower than you'll ever see. Right now, the Masters of the Universe toy figures are $3.77 after rebate, plus 50 cents off with two. And Mattel's Masters of the Universe slime pit, just $8.88. When I talk toys this Christmas, I won't be playing around. I'm W.C. When it comes to low prices for cooks, I'm one tough cookie. catch a touchdown pass another episode in the ongoing battle of ohio it's always been a fierce rivalry between the bengals and the browns and it's picked up in recent years because each have had their turn being the top team in the afc central and it goes back even further than that paul brown who founded the browns franchise the owner of the bengals forrest gregg once coached the browns art modell fired him he went on to take the bengals to a super bowl and he made no secret of his displeasure with the browns organization after he wound up in cincinnati so there's always a little juice going when and the Bengals and Browns get together, and especially so today, because the title's on the line in the AFC Central, Lamont. Bob, that hit. You know, I talked to McAnally after that, and you say he scored a touchdown. You know, he doesn't remember that to this day, but being the Harvard man that he is, a very intelligent man, that was the day that he started being a punter. He left that wide receiver alone, which is another story. But, you know, early in the season, I thought Cincinnati was the team that was going to win it in the, in the AFC Central. But... Um, Cleveland came on like uh, like gangbusters, but all of a sudden today, Cincinnati has a golden opportunity to get back in that AFC Central race. The roller coaster season of the Bengals was best exemplified by this one play last week against the Patriots. For a moment, it seemed as if the New England Patriots had scored a touchdown, but just as quickly, the Bengals appeared headed for six points of their own. This Bengal team has everybody confused but the coach thinks he's beginning to figure them out. We weren't sure whether we were any good or not. Until you know that you're pretty good, you generally play up and down football. One guy realizes it, and then another guy realizes it, and then somebody tells the other guy in the locker next to him, and they pretty soon the ball club figures it out. During the first part of the season, we really weren't sure ourselves how good we are. I mean, more we got into the season all that, I mean, we felt like we can do anything we want to do. We felt more confidence in what we can do. And basically, we played football, not beat ourselves. The Bengals possess one of the league's most potent offenses, powered by James Brooks, the AFC leader in all-purpose yardage. But like a great race car without a driver, the Bengals lacked direction earlier in the year. In third-year quarterback Boomer Esiason, they found that. Well, Boomer, in the beginning, uh, didn't play quite as well as Boomer did last year. Uh, following that, though, uh, to carry us through that time, James Brooks was just spectacular, all during the early part of the year. Now Boomer is, is up to par. He's playing great football right now. James Brooks playing great football. And we're spreading the ball around so much, which is just giving defensive fits. We just try to mix in the pass with the run 50-50. Uh, I don't think you'll ever see me throw for 400 yards, and I don't think you'll ever see us you know, really run for 400 yards, just because that we are a 50-50 team. We never really like to rely on one set part of the game. We like to mix it up as best we can. If you stop Chris Collinsworth, we're liable to hand it to James Brooks. And if you stop James Brooks, watch out for Eddie Brown down the middle or Stanley Wilson off tackle. Um, we're a fun team to watch, I have to admit. It's kind of fun for me to watch the replays. I wish I could see the games on Sunday. I'm working that day, though. Weitz may talk of having fun now, but he certainly wasn't enjoying himself when he benched Sison in Week 10 at Houston and replaced him with Kenny Anderson. I was visibly upset when he sat me down in the second quarter of the Houston football game down in Houston. I thought I was playing a good first half, and uh, I had a couple balls dropped on me, and, and his reasoning was we needed to shake things up. Generally, if you remove your left guard, nobody is shaken. But if you take the quarterback up, the, the team is aroused. 
And uh, when I told Boomer we were going to make a change and, and put Kenny in, his reaction was the kind of reaction I hoped it would be. He got angry, he threw his helmet. It got me really fired up, and uh, you know maybe it was a good psychological ploy on his part. I guess he'll look like a genius because of it, but it really hurt my feelings. And I uh, came back with a vengeance that game, and uh, we almost pulled that game out in the long run. Now the Bengals are where any team in football wants to be, facing their biggest rival in the season's biggest game. But despite beating the Browns in week three, White knows it'll be a lot tougher the second time around. It's going to be a classic game. It's going to be a hard-hitting game. There's not a lot of friendships between the two ball clubs. It's, it's all honest and, and competitive uh, rivalry. But when the gun goes off, um, as one of the Cleveland Browns put it, it will be a war. This game today is what all players play the game for, a chance to be involved in a legitimate big game. Now, sometimes coaches are guilty of telling players every week, this is a big game, which just isn't true. You don't have a big game every week. Something has to be on the line to deserve the tag, big game. Now, once in the Super Bowl, we had a coach who shall remain lame, nameless. Well, his name was Bob Holloway. But he had been a coach at the University of Michigan for a long time, and he made the mistake of giving a pregame speech just before the Super Bowl, which can be dangerous because there's really nothing you can say about the magnitude of a game like this. But he got all wound up. He had us all fired up. We were there. We were ready to play. Then as his voice started to rise, he said in a somewhat confused state, Men, this is the biggest game of your life. This game is even bigger than the Rose Bowl. And at that point, we all started laughing. And we continued to laugh all the way out into the field. As a matter of fact, we laughed until we realized the score was 30 to 14 in favor of the Raiders. Then we stopped laughing, and the Raiders started laughing. And to this day, I believe that that was the reason we lost that Super Bowl game. So I guess I address these comments to the coach. Do not embarrass yourself today trying to give a pregame speech. The players know how big this game is, so let them go out and enjoy it. Because one thing for sure, this game today is at least as big as the Rose Bowl. Ahmad, thanks. We turn the coin over and take a look at Cleveland's situation with Frank DeFord when NFL 86 continues. It's your last chance to steal a deal on the full line of Volkswagens. Right now through December 31st, you can get a great deal on a Volkswagen Jetta, the best-selling European import in the U.S. Or make your best offer on a Volkswagen Golf. It's the best-selling car in all of Europe. Hurry in. December 31st will be your last chance to steal a deal on a Volkswagen. And missing out will be a crime. Taco Light, Taco Bell Grande. Anything but boring. From Taco Bell, the cure for the common meal. It has something to cool your face. Thanks. I needed that. Something to soothe your face. Thanks. I needed that. Something to smooth your face. Thanks. I needed that. Something to tone, to tighten, to brace your face. And help get you going. Thanks. I needed that. You're not finished shaving till you've used Skin Bracer Aftershave after every shave. It has what your face needs. Skin Bracer. I met You'd no more settle for a flake in your hair than a spot on your tie. You, you pass the test to good grooming. Has the look of success. Your head and shoulders above the rest. One flake can mean dandruff. Regular shampoos may rinse flakes, but head and shoulders protection goes to the source to help stop flakes. And that's doing it right. Your head and shoulders above the rest. Now, folks, how can the sports city that produced Bob Feller, Jimmy Brown, that even recently had the likes of World Be Free, receive such abuse? That's what Frank DeFord wonders. Let's talk about Cleveland. Well, for some reason, Bobby, you're only allowed to make jokes about cities in the old Northeast. It's a law. If you're some ugly pastel sunbelt city full of smog and barbecue smoke, still, no jokes allowed. But if you're a lunch bucket place, if you're Buffalo or Pittsburgh or Detroit, open season. And no city ever took it in the ear more than Cleveland has. Okay, the city's river did catch on fire and they couldn't put it out. The city went bankrupt. <laughs> All the fish died in Lake Erie. The Indians and the Cavaliers wore Cleveland across their chest for defeat after defeat after defeat. 
But hey, nobody's perfect. Did everybody have to keep on calling Cleveland the mistake on the lake? But no more. Now these things run in cycles, and if you've got to pick the next hot sports town, try Cleveland, Ohio. The Browns are back on top. Even the Cavaliers have grown respectable, and something named Cleveland State is a threat in college basketball. And the Indians are real comers in the American League. Not only that, but Cleveland has just been awarded the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now, if there is a single personification of this renaissance, it must be the youthful Bernie Kosar. He's an Ohio boy, and he wanted to come back from glamorous Miami and play for Cleveland. In this transient, throwaway society of ours, there's something awfully endearing about that. Kozar just turned 23 last month, and he's still actually growing. You know he's younger than Vinny Testaverde? The Browns have felt all along that the team is just good enough to take off if Kozar is ready to move up another rung or two. The town itself has been cautious in giving away its ineffection to the Browns, but then Cleveland hasn't won a title in anything in 22 years. And when your city's been broke and your river's been on fire, it tends to knock you back on your heels. Now, a winning team can't really change a city. Victory in football games doesn't get you any jobs. It doesn't even patch up potholes. But there's a wonderful dynamic that can come over a city when its team starts to win. And there's something in the air suddenly that says, it's Cleveland's turn. The old mistake on the lake is threatened to become the fury on the Erie. Ooh. Mm. Thank you, Frank. I like the bow tie. It makes you look like Orville Riddenbacher. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate that. All right, now, folks, I, I know you don't want to miss this. We talked about it yesterday, and even though you're running around during this holiday season, you're going to stop in the middle of everything you're doing for Surprise Saturday, 3.30 Eastern Time this coming week. That's where all four of us get to invite a mystery guest. Nobody knows, not even the producer knows who it is. We bring the person in, we have a little interview with them, and the people in the studio audience get to uh, ask questions of them. So, Ahmad, let me ask you this. It's a mystery who you will bring. Who won't you bring? I will not bring Irv Cross. Well, not bring her across. I assume that Jimmy the Greek will turn down your uh, No, I'm not going to bring W.C. Fields. Because I love him. Material like this. <laughs> steaming and teeping with, with something, with brilliance. Boy, what a show. Am I ever glad we're out of here. So long. Friday Night Videos takes the field in the starting lineup. Ron Darling, plus Bruce Springsteen, Van Halen, and Robin Williams. Friday Night Videos managed by Bob Costas and Ahmad Rashad. It's been a long time coming. A better way to buy a better car. Oldsmobile for 1987 and the Cleveland Oldsmobile Connection. Lloyd Barker, Dowd, Earl, Ganley, Hearn, Gene Norris, Reliable, Fred Stecker, Zalad. The Cleveland Oldsmobile Connection. The dealers more people shop, the dealers more people trust. For Oldsmobile and a better deal. Get more for lease with the GMAC Holiday Lease. Hmm, sure hope it starts. On typical Ohio winter mornings, you'll be glad you filled up at Ohio. Ice is kind of thick today. Because Ohio unleaded gasolines and diesel supreme with Ice Guard are guaranteed to prevent fuel line freeze up. Well, here goes. So Ohio with Ice Guard. You go, or we pay the toll. Morning, Frank. I've seen cougars in mountain snow and desert heat. In any climate, they're right at home. But Genesee beer has only one home. This natural brew is made in one place for consistent taste. Jenny, you can count on it. The great outdoors in a glass, Genesee beer. When I drink beer, I want a beer taste. And Genesee Light tastes like a real beer. It doesn't matter to me that Genesee Light is a light beer. It's the taste I'm looking for in a beer, and I'll drink it. Discover the difference. Jim Donovan, Channel 3 News. James Brooks of the Cincinnati Bengals and electrifying back in a major force in the number one offense in the NFL. Last week in a route of New England, Brooks broke this 56-yard touchdown run. He finished the day with over 250 yards rushing and receiving. Today he leads the Bengals against Bernie Kosar and the Browns. First and ten. Long ball is going to go for a touchdown. The game's over. What's the slaughter? It's the Bengals and the Browns in the Battle of Ohio. The National Broadcasting Company presents the National Football League. From 
Riverfront Stadium. It's the Cleveland Browns versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by AT&T, the right choice. Riverfront Stadium was sold out long ago. They've been waiting for this one in Cincinnati. The Bengals and the Browns and weather conditions are just about perfect. Good afternoon, everyone. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy on a very big game day in Cincinnati. They're calling this one the Battle of Ohio. The Browns come in with a one-game lead. If they win, they win the AFC Central Division. But the odds makers like the Bengals and with reason. Cincinnati's beaten Cleveland five of the last six meetings. Bengals have the number one offense in the NFL. And the Bengals dominated the Browns at Cleveland in September. And a number one question about Trumpy coming in. Can the Browns stop this vaunted running game of Cincinnati? Don, I think they have to. It's not an if. This team averages 4.9 yards per carry. Last week against New England, 300 yards rushing. That's the number one priority for the Cleveland defense. Stop the Bengals running back. Today we'll be watching two of the rising stars at quarterback in the National Football League. Boomer Esiason and Bernie Kosar. Esiason, of course, the first quarterback taken in the 84 draft, and Bernie Kosar the first taken in the 85 draft, the supplemental draft. Both these young men, extraordinary talents. The Bengals like Boomer Esiason because of his strength of arm, and the Cleveland Browns, I think, like Bernie Kosar because he diagnoses a defense, calls the audibles at the line of scrimmage perfectly. He very seldom makes a mistake. He is a very even keel, a very, uh, his mind is just, it's just set there. He very seldom makes a mistake, and that's what Marty Schottenheimer wants out of Kosar. Bengals are coming in off a victory at New England where they had almost 600 yards offense, and that's what Marty Schottenheimer, a defensive specialist, has to try and shut down today. Marty and his Browns coming in with a one-game lead, but they're the underdog to Sam White and the Bengals. White, of course, feels that his football team and Boomer Esiason is hot. Probably the best offense in the NFL. The numbers support that, but it really comes up to how Boomer Esiason plays on each given Sunday. Jim Breach will kick the ball off to start the game for Cincinnati. Back deep for Cleveland is Gerald McNeil. A dangerous return man, the smallest player in the NFL, and here comes McNeil. Breaks it for the moment. He's out to the 32-yard line. And there, Cleveland goes on offense, first and 10, with Bernie Kosar, number 19 from Miami of Florida, where he quarterbacked the national championship team. Curtis Dickey and Kevin Mack, his starting runners. Langhorn and rookie Webster Slaughter, the receivers, and Ozzie Newsom, an all-pro tight end. The linemen, Farron, Williams, Babb, Fight, and Risen. They've taken good care of Kosar of late, and if you blitz him, he'll kill it. Kosar, young as he is, is as good as there is against the blitz. A tremendous emotion level here at Riverfront. The Battle of Ohio, and we're ready to fire the first shot now on first and 10 for Cleveland. Wide open, Bruno. Wide open is Langhorn. And he's down inside the 10. He's going to go down to the one-yard line. Yo, what a way to open the Battle of Ohio. On one thing about Bernie Kosar, he's the youngest quarterback in the NFL. And I don't think there is a more accurate deep thrower playing the position of quarterback. This ends up being a 69-yard completion. And you can see a busted coverage on the first play. 37 Jackson, the weak safety, doesn't get over there. Lewis Breed in the corner lets him go. First and goal, Cleveland. Braden was only in waving distance as Langhorn makes his 38th catch as long as to the season. 66 yards officially down to the two-yard line. So Kosar makes that first shot a big one, and now the Browns are challenging point flank first and goal. High back is Kevin Mack. Kevin Mack. Free ball, and it looks like the Bengals might have it. They will wait till they unpile. Don Mack took a shot and lost it. He's playing with a bad shoulder. Drunk. He's got a harness on. It's his bad left shoulder. And the Bengals look like they're standing there like the Cleveland Browns maintain possession. They got it. They do. So Cleveland maintains the ball. Don, I also noticed that Ricky Bolden is in the lineup. Watch this hit. It's Reggie Williams, 
And it looks like it's the hit right on the left arm, which affects the left shoulder. And it looks like Travis Tucker, 87, dives in there for the football. They lost a yard, but it's still second and goal. We got to watch Kevin Mack's shoulder. He's their best running back. At Cleveland in September, the Browns were out of that game. Cincinnati dominated, but now the Browns with a big pass play and then getting a break, recovering their own fumble, goes second down and goal. Kevin Mack again. He's down close, but no signal yet. He's not in, but he is inside the one-yard line. Mack comes in as the Browns' top rusher. Over 500 yards, but that time the much improved De Bengal defense throws him back a second try. On the uh, Cleveland Browns, bring in, bring in Dave Pazuli. Now he'll be a running back. He'll be a lead blocker for Kevin Mack. Pazuli at about 275, a defensive lineman, number 72, in the backfield. Down and go for Cleveland from less than a yard out. Kosar to Mack, and he's in for a touchdown, and the Browns go up. It is a 6 0 Cleveland lead. Three tries to Kevin Mack, and on the third, he's in. Great block by Dave Pazuli. They're running right this way. Watch Pazuli head up in there. Head down. He leads it. He gets a block on number 56, Ron Simpkins, and actually. Kevin Mack into the end zone rather easily. Didn't take long. Four plays, 68 yards, 123 on the clock. Mack credited with a one-yard touchdown run. Now Mark Mosley, who's come into Cleveland to replace the injured Matt Barr, who underwent knee surgery, out to try the point after he's been perfect as a Cleveland kicker, has made all his extra points in both field goal tries, and he extends the Brown lead now to seven to nothing. So the Bengals will get the ball for the first time as Cleveland's offense comes out of humming a first down throw for 66 yards set it all up. We'll be back with the Browns kickoff here at Riverfront right after this. Don't just ask for a light. Hey, give me a light. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. A less filling light beer with the first name and taste. Because everything else is just a light. Bird light. Small pickups on fun ranges. Small pickups on no strangers in. Small pickups on fun ranges from four. Well, they're big on small overall. Large on little, except in the middle. Well, I want my fun ranger. Well, I want my well, I want my fun ranger around here. Ford Ranger built fun tough. I just lost two. Hey, Chief, we need an 800 number. We need more lines. I think we need help. I think we need a fax machine. I've been waiting for computers. Yeah, new phones. I think we need help. Today, what a growing business we needs need most is finding out what it needs most. From long distance to phone systems to telemarketing, AT&T has the we answers. Need, uh, course, no, right? but we need good stuff. I think we need help. Call our small business specialists. We can help. Don't just ask for a light beer. A couple of lights. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. A less filling light beer with the first name and taste. Because everything else... Ah! Last call! It's just a light. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy back at Sold Out Riverfront Stadium on a cold, clear December day as the Browns' Kevin Mack just went in on a third try. Got into the end zone from a yard out after a 66-yard pass play on the opening play of the game from Kosar to Slaughter. Or to Langhorn, and that was what put it all in position, and now Mosley kicks it off. All spun downfield. It's taken at the four-yard line. Here comes Tim McGee, a rookie sprinter from Tennessee. The Browns excel on special teams and do there. As McGee is cut down, knocked out of bounds inside his 20. Clarence Weathers came down and got him. Esiason starts at quarterback in his third year from Maryland. He has an array of great offensive weapons. James Brooks may be the best. Stanley Wilson a breakaway run him in the backfield with him. Collinsworth and Brown the wideouts. Offensive line is huge and it's excellent. Munoz a consensus all pro having his best season. 
Bengals getting the ball for the first time, but they find themselves down seven to nothing. Boomer's looking for some on first down, and he has an open man on his tight end, Rodney Holman, who's knocked down by Chris Rockins. Gain of about eight on the play out to the 28 yard line. Of course, I think the fans have seen the Bengals enough to know that they like to run right at the line of scrimmage, and here they go with that hurry up offense. Indeed, they call Bob Golick the Cleveland nose tackle. He calls himself a nose backer because he plays off to get a read. Here's another throw, another catch. First down, Cincinnati. They're out to the 42 yard line. Chip Banks made the hit, but Eddie Brown coming off the right flank makes the reception. 15 yard gain. Chip Banks and Clay Matthews pinch as linebackers. They don't give up much to the run up the middle. Very fast outside backers. Now the Bengals right into alignment without a huddle. Second back. And Brooks on first down. He lost a yard. Anthony Griggs was on the stop. Cleveland has two of the best coverers at cornerback in the league. In Frank Minifield and Hanford Dixon. Ray Ellis, a former Eagle, having a big year. He was picked up as a free agent in the summer. And Chris Rockins, the safety. Round to the near flank. Collinsworth having another great year out on the left flank. Second and 12. It's a fake reverse. James Brooks carries the ball, and he's tripped up. A fine defensive play. Looked like Chip Banks got a piece of him as he came over. And so it brings up third and about eight. Patriots have gone up in front of the 49ers 7 0. That is in the first quarter at Foxborough. Cardinals and the Giants scoreless so far, as are the Packers and the Buccaneers. First crucial down now for the Bengals, third down and long. And we've talked about all season long answering drives. When your opponent scores, you've got to come back and get points on the board, or psychologically, your opponent is way up on you. One back, that's Eddie Brown going in motion. Sias in a good runner loops it out ball is caught by Eddie Brown and look at that brilliant move by Eddie Brown the All-American from Miami of Florida linebacker had a play on him with that quick darting move he gets ahead and let's see if he got enough for the first down and I think he's short what they try to do is get the defensive back 31 Minifield caught up in the wash and then Eddie Brown is out here he kind of bobbles just a little bit but I don't think he's got enough for a first down. Good coverage. Mark Harper finally knocks him out. It's going to be fourth down in inches, and the Bengals are going for it. The big people come in now. Eddie Brown did very well just to get it close as he was in, in, then made the tackler miss. Sam White's a gambler, and he's sending Larry Kennebrew in, a huge fullback. Also coming in is Stanley Wilson, a 210 pound runner from Oklahoma who has really been brilliant in recent weeks. He's averaging six yards a rush for the season. And I think Sam White just going to the well that he used the last time they faced Cleveland. Clint Kinnebrew in a very short yardage situation in Cleveland broke about a 50 yard run on third down and short. Browns lead the game seven and nothing scored on their opening drive. First play was a 66 yard pass. It set up a touchdown run three plays later by Kevin Mack. First down and plenty more. Stanley Wilson locks on down to the 36 yard line of Cleveland. And for Dixon stopped him on fourth and inches. Stanley Wilson busts a 13 yard run. Trump. And for Dixon on the tackle, the one thing about Stanley Wilson is the acceleration. Excellent job of acceleration. Both hands on the football. He had the first down. No one hit him until he had gained about three or four yards. And then Hanford Dixon and also Chris Rockins on the tackle. Minifield misses him. This is a story made for a movie. Three times that death dust got him. He's come back. Three rehabs. The Bengals stayed with him. And last week, his first ever 100 yard rushing day in the NFL. Missed almost two NFL seasons because of drug problems. Said he wanted to live and he wanted to play football again. And he's come back and he's been great. Here's a throw and a catch. James Brooks is inside the 10 yard line. So you're talking, Trump, about answering a drive with a drive. And the number one offense in the NFL takes it right down the field on Cleveland. That was a 30 yard gain. On last week, the Bengals averaged nine yards per play on first down and they do it with so many different people Rodney Holman's caught a pass 
Eddie Brown has caught a pass. Brooks has run it. Wilson has run it. They spread it around all over the field. They give you a multitude of formations. And here you get a mismatch. You get Eddie Johnson covering James Brooks. Eddie Johnson is spectacular linebacker but he doesn't have the foot speed to stay with James Brooks. That was Brooks 47th reception of the year. Isaias in four for four throwing the ball for 60 yards. And Wilson and the Browns are there to knock him down. Filling from the middle was linebacker Clay Matthews. Anthony Griggs was also on the stop and so was nose tackle Bob Golick. And I do think this Cleveland Brown defense much improved from the third game of the, of the season. They've made off their defensive coordinator has got that defense now in in place and I think the players feel a lot more confident in what they're doing. That's four point nine yards a rush. Remington ready to pop the ball to Isiasen. It is second down and goal from the five. Brooks throw and James Brooks can't hold on at the one. Now third down and goal arises for the Bengals at the six yard line of Cleveland. And it's pretty obvious the Cleveland Browns idea here is to get people on Boomer Esiason. Clay Matthews a free shot looked like Stanley Wilson 32 missed him. This is just overthrown by Brooks. 53 Griggs out there to make the tackle. This drive coming up now for Cincinnati. Bengals trail the Browns seven to nothing. Third and goal. Sprint out. Big rush. Not close. And so the Bengals come up empty in a touchdown attempt, but they do have a short field goal try coming up. And I think it's Sam Clancy who gets his hand up in Boomer Esiason's face. Excellent defense by the Browns. It's the half roll by Cincinnati to get away from the brush. Get away from the rush, and Sam Clancy was able to get his hand up here. Let's see if we can pick him up. Boomer pumps. Watch from the right. Yep, Sam Clancy, 91. Excellent play, Cleveland. Jim Breach on the field. He's 15 for 30 on field goal tries. He's not having a good year. He's had some back problems and has been pressing a bit. This though a 23 yard attempt is on the way and the Bengals do get points Not a touchdown but they're on the board but Don that's a missed opportunity you can't let a team that's leading the division stop you in that situation so psychologically Cleveland gets a lift we'll be back to Cincinnati with the Bengals kickoff and what looks like it might be a track meet introducing a new category of automobiles the new Ford Thunderbird Turbo Coupe, designed with an intercooled turbocharged engine, computerized suspension, and an anti-lock braking system. So rather than fall into any existing category, the new Thunderbird Turbo Coupe creates its own. Have you driven a Ford lately? So the issue is clear. Sony Video 8, the system of the future, or VHSC, the compromise of the past. Now, as we've seen, the new Sony Handycam with autofocus and zoom gives you a measurably better picture, far superior sound, twice the recording time, and on Sony video cassettes, your memories are safe. While on VHSC, they could be fleeting. I rest my case. The Sony Video 8 system. Judge for yourself. You gotta stop pestering me, son. I'm not what you're after. I'm a crowing chicken. Rooster, that is. <laughs> you gotta go to Kentucky Fried Chicken if you want great, I say great tasting chicken. No one cooks a tender like the Colonel. But just one taste of that finger licking good chicken and you'll never go anywhere else. There ain't no substitute for honest to goodness Kentucky Fried Chicken. I say Kentucky Fried Chicken. We do chicken right. Back at Cincinnati, a Bengal fan with a Bernie blaster. They handed out megaphones to the dismay of the Browns here today. But so far on offense, it's been a case of can you top this as both teams have come out hitting big plays. Do you think the defense will catch up with the offense, Mr. Trump? Uh, they're going to have to. Those Bernie blasters are silenced when you start the game with a 66-yard pass reception from uh, 
Cozart a Langhorn, those burning blasters mean nothing. There again is McNeil returning a kickoff for Cleveland. This time, all 144 pounds of him runs into a stone wall of Bengal tacklers. So the Cleveland offense comes out again, and those Bengal cornerbacks have to be nervous. Don't blame him a bit. One thing that you have to give credit to Marty Schottenheimer and his staff for in 86, 1985, the Cleveland Browns, one of the most physical teams I think you could find in the NFL, with Mack and Viner each rushing for 1,000 yards. Because of injury, they bring in Lindy and Fonny, the offensive pointer. Now this is a finesse team. They throw the ball all over the place. 7-3, Cleveland leads. 9.35 to play, first quarter. Looking again, long ball again, and he's got a man out there just off his fingertips. Webster Slaughter running the fly. No pattern off the near flank, and it's incomplete at the 40 of Cincinnati. Lewis Phillips, a good rookie cover, was with him. On what Cleveland is trying to do and will do all day long is with formation and motion, try to single coverage, get single coverage on a receiver somewhere. The first time it worked for 66 yards to Langhorn. This is something the Bengals are going to face all day long. Ray Horton is now in. Extra defensive back. Second down and ten for Kosar and the Browns. Mack. He's got a bad shoulder, but it's not bothering him here as he is hit out of bounds at about the 33-yard line. That'll leave him about five yards short of a first down, bringing up third down. Bengals showed the blitz there. And one of the things Bernie Kosar has done so very, very well in this 86 season is read that blitz and audible at the line of scrimmage. That looked like an audible, too. Bengals had a lot of people packed on inside. Bernie calls the sweep, trying to get around the corner, almost did. Here we go. Cleveland had 2,000 yards plus rushers, as all the Browns fans know, but with Biner out with an ankle injury, Max slowed somewhat. They've gone to an excellent intermediate and long range passing game with Kosar pulling the trigger as he did in that first drive. Third down, Kosar needs five. Intercepted by the strong safety, David Fulcher of Sonata ruling he did not have possession. They might look again. They're saying the ball hit the ground. It looked like it went right through the receiver's hands. Clarence Weathers, 85. Now, Kozar, not known as a quarterback with a tremendously strong arm, watch him orchestrate the offense there. He's looking all over the place. They're hand-signaling the play. They get the play they want. And when it goes through Clarence, I believe it's Clarence Weathers, 85 hand. Here's the play. Whoa. Hey, wait a minute now. That looked pretty close. Mitchell says no, did not have possession though when he went down, so the Browns will have to punt the ball now to Cincinnati. Ray Horton is back deep for the Bengals. Wobbly kick, it could be tough to handle. Horton gets it. And he's down at the 34-yard line. Again, those fired up special teamers for the Browns come down hitting. They think they have the ball. Horton's had a bad year coughing it up, and he might have done it again. They he say did. Cleveland's got it. again to replay a big factor as to whether or not the ground in fact caused the fumble or was it loose before he went down the signal is the signal is is this an interception by David Fulcher through Clarence Weathers hands no that's no interception but was the punt return a fumble it must have been because the offense is back out for the Cleveland Browns Ray Horton has had critical fumbles in this season earlier that could be one now as the Browns get it back. Well, the play goes, so it's a turnover. First and ten Browns from the Bengal 32-yard line. It's 7-3 Cleveland first quarter. Three ball, and Kosar falls on it back at the 40-yard line. Now the punt return. Horton catches it, then slips. I have a feeling this is the first time the replay official is also oh, seeing it ball loose. No question it's a fumble. 
59 is the guy who knocks it loose for Cleveland. Mike Johnson, a tough linebacker. Browns, only one team has turned it over fewer times in the NFL this season than Cleveland. That's the New England Patriots. Who were absolutely destroyed last week by Cincinnati. Right now, though, Bernie Kosa is changing the play on second down and about 18. Blitz stands in. Free ball. It's incomplete again. Not close to a connection. And again, a Cincinnati defensive back Trump nearly had a play on it. Lewis Braden was the guy behind the receiver. That time the blitz seemed to bother Kosar a little bit. He's under control out there. Down to this point, the ball has bounced for Cleveland. They fumbled it twice. Have not lost a fumble. The Bengals have fumbled it once and lost it. Bernie Kosar's mechanics as a passer often seem a little awkward, but the bottom line on him is he wins. Browns with a 10 and 4 record coming in. Third and 18. Long ball, and it's broken up down at the 22 yard line. Official right there says it's clean, and Mr. Kosar gets up off the turf. Playing field here at Riverfront. About as welcoming as a parking lot. It's hard. This is excellent coverage by Cincinnati. Brennan, the intended receiver. Breeden right there. That's rather surprising. Gosar did have time to throw it, but he threw it directly into coverage. Now the Bengals ready to return another punt, and that's Ray Horton who fumbled the last one back in there. Jeff Gossett, the Cleveland punter, try to get it down inside the 15 if he can. Brown's unable to capitalize on a big break. The breaks have gone the Browns way early in this game. You'll recall when they got down to the two yard line of Cincinnati after that opening throw of 66 yards by Kosar. Kevin Mack fumbled the ball. But the Browns Reset recovered and took it in later. On 20 seconds. 30 second clock reset it on 20 seconds. Dick Jorgensen, the referee, wants the 30-second clock ticked down to 20 seconds. That's how much time the Browns will have to get the kick off. The Cleveland Browns special teams, as you know, Trump, have scored a lot of points, certainly set up a lot of points. And so far, they've been a big difference in this game, although that did not result in points for Cleveland down the drive. Last time these two teams met, of course, the Cleveland Browns special teams had a blocked punt. The only touchdown Cleveland scored that day in September. Browns offense didn't score on Cincinnati in that 30 to 13 loss. A high punt. It's a good it hit, and it takes a jump into the end zone. So the Bengals making it nervous, but they finally get the ball back. Trailing 7 to 3. Messiason and the Cincinnati offense goes out when we come back to Riverfront. Just off Route 19 in St. Petersburg is a place where you can learn to ski the Alps and shoot the rapids all in the same building. At Bill Jackson Sporting Goods, you can practice everything from a stem Christie to an Eskimo roll. But if you go there, remember, bring your imagination and your visa card. Because Bill Jackson doesn't promise you son Moritz, and he doesn't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Howdy. <laughs> Give me a light. Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. A Bud Light. So if you want the less spilling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. <laughs> Bud Light. Ask for Bud Light, because everything else is just a light. Hi. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Buy your friend a beer. <laughs> You're about to see one of the many things this Ford Taurus can hold. It's called the road. Ford designed the Taurus wagon to handle confidently and to respond with precision. Because you should get more out of a wagon than what you put into it. This is Taurus. Next Sunday, the NFL plays here when the Jets battle the Bengals. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL 86. 
Right, here's the offense of the Bengals on the sideline. You can see two defensive backs there for the Cleveland Browns trying to listen in. They're going to need uh, an interpreter because each team calls their offensive plays and formations differently. But nevertheless, Minifield and Rockins over there trying to trying to pick up whatever they can. Bengals come out trailing seven to three. We have 8.07 to play in the first quarter. Quick out, James Brooks, super hands, and James is ahead for eight. Out to the 28-yard line. As we check the scoreboard, 49ers have come back now to tie the Patriots at Foxborough. The Giants going. Actually, they won the division yesterday, but they're going for home field in the NFC playoffs with two more wins. What about Indianapolis? A lot of people thought they'd go right down the chute with Vinny Testaverde standing out there to be drafted number one, but their coach Ron Meyer said, we're going for the win. We'll see. Still nothing, nothing with Bills. Stanley Wilson to the outside, and he turns up the hill, and Stanley Wilson from Oklahoma breaks another good run for Cincinnati. First down to the 35-yard line. Don comes into the game today averaging six yards a carry. As we watch the offense and defensive line where the game is won and lost. And those offensive line does a pretty good job of at least cutting off this, the pursuit. And Wilson with that tremendous foot speed at 218 pounds gets upfield. He's now averaging 7.3 yards per carry today. Remember that fourth and inches when he ran it for 13 yards that subsequently led to a Bengal field goal. Their only points at 7-3 Cleveland. Zayas sitting with a deep drop. Here's Matthews blitzing and he gets it away and it's overthrown. Stanley Wilson coming out of the backfield and coming up very quickly on the ball and very nearly making a play on it. Stanford Dixon. On the Browns doing an excellent job of disrupting Boomer Esiason. Clay Matthews, even though some people in Cleveland feel he's had an offseason, has really required more to rush the passer this year as the fourth man in the pass rush than he has in past years. Still an excellent player, a very consistent outside linebacker. Bengals throwing early. They rushed for a team record 300 yards against a normally excellent New England defense last week. Tyson can count the house. Now he's got to hurry with Reggie Camp after him. And Boomer, still not done, throws an incomplete pass somehow. Siason's linebacker big, 6'4, 220. Now that's one thing about this generation of quarterbacks. The class of 83, the Siason in 84, and Kosar in 85, they're creators. They never give up on a play. Last generation of quarterback with that kind of coverage and that kind of pressure, throw it out of bounds, go back to the huddle. The Sison, Kosar, Kelly, Marino, Eason, Elway, always trying to make the play. Cincinnati 0 for 2 on third down conversion today. Third coming up. Bengals need 10. Trying to turn up field and the Browns give him nothing at all as Cleveland's in sync defense cuts down the wide speed of Tim McGee and runs him out of bounds and now the Bengals will have to punt the ball for the first time. Looks like Felix right there to well, they push him out. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Cleveland right here goes after Jeff Hayes. They blocked the punt in Cleveland. He's had several punts blocked this season. The Browns have 10 men up. This is an easy way to get good field position if you can get it done. Block that punt. Jeff Hayes, lowest distance in the NFL, but very few of his are returned. This one won't be, but it certainly was short. Ball is down at the 36 yard line, and there Cleveland goes in offense for a third time. 26 yard punt. By Jeff Hayes, although he did win a game against the Steelers, running a fake punt back for 61 yards and a touchdown. Hosts are ready to operate again when we come back. At GE, everything we do is to help you live your life just the way you want to. We give you time to live your dreams and smile, to let you see the light that your life, the light that sees you through. Joy. Thank you. 
When you overflex it, myoflex it, flex it, pump it, pump. New Myoflex Pump, the pain relief rub that's grease-free, odor-free, sting-free, so you're free to flex, flex, flex. My myoflex, number one recommended by physicians and pharmacists. When you overflex it, my myoflex it, new Myoflex Pump. I've tried it, now I believe it. Denerex Tingles tells me it's doing more. Head and shoulders, no tingle. Both have dandruff medicine, but Denerex adds both an extra anti-itch medicine and conditioner, too. Goodbye, head and shoulders. Hello, Denerex. On New Year's Day, the best and brightest of the bowls are on NBC. First, the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl, hosts the fourth-ranked Michigan Wolverines as they battle Arizona State. Then, the Orange Bowl lights up the night sky when third-ranked Oklahoma takes on the Razorbacks of Arkansas. College football's best and brightest are on NBC Sports. Schottenheimer, showdown, call it whatever you want. This is what it's all about. The Battle of Ohio is right now. The Browns with the ball in a 7-3 lead. 6.51 to go in the first quarter. Ross Browner comes over and makes the knockdown on Curtis Dickey at the 37-yard line. He gained only about a yard. And already we see Kevin Mack on the sideline. Uh, he's coming back and he was just out for that play. Major Everett was the up back, Curtis Dickey, the running back. Mack now back in the ball game. Browns have been beaten here at, at Cincinnati the last four times they've played here. Cleveland has beaten the Browns have actually lost five of the last six games overall, including one in September, 30 to 13 at Cleveland Stadium. Second and a long eight for Kosar, who looks like he's changing the play. Out pattern to rookie Webster Slaughter, and he's out of bounds. They're going to rule it no catch. You got to have both feet in bounds. One foot uh, comes down out of bounds. Couldn't cut neither. Get it done. And the one thing you got to like, and you keep repeating about Bernie Kosar, I don't think you can throw a defense at him that he doesn't recognize. We'll watch Bernie and look at the defense. Watch what he does. He's like Br'er Rabbit in the Briar Patch when you throw a blitz at him. He loves it. One of six so far. That was the first completion on the first play. It was for 66 yards. He's not completed one since. Third along eight. Here's a throw in Brian Brennan with a clutch reception to midfield, and it's a first down for Cleveland. As an undersized, overachieving wide receiver from Boston College comes down with the ball 13 yards downfield. Now what we're seeing is Bernie Kosar standing there, trying to wait as long as he possibly can to call the final play that they're going to run. Letting the defense spread out, fake this, fake that, move in and out of the line of scrimmage. And then he finally tells his offense what they're going to do. It's working. That was Brian Brennan's 46th catch. He leads the Browns. Been in the end zone five times. Now it is first and ten Cleveland. Browns lead seven to three first quarter. Kevin Mack. That's excellent blocking from the right side. Pike and Risen. Bad firing out. And the Browns are ahead on a first down carry for eight. Uh, that made possible by that play action faking and the quick passes that Kosar is throwing. And to this point, we haven't called Tim Crumry's name. Browner's back in the game. He had the flu all week long. Scow, Jim Scow made the start, but Crumry being handled by Mike Babb, Dan Fike, and Gary Williams, the center and the two guards. Second down and less than two. Mack with five carries for 17 yards. Now a sixth carry. He's been in the end zone once, and here he goes for a first down. As Cleveland gets blockers out in front, a cordon of blockers in front of Kevin Mack, and he's down to the 33-yard line. Excellent instinct as a running back. I'll watch him look for the spot. There it is. Bam. He turns up field. The offensive line does a great job of just keeping people up. Larry Williams and Paul Farron. Offensive left guard and left tackle just standing their people up. Let Mack make the choice as to where the hole is. Big third 
touchdown throw to Brian Brennan kept the drive alive and now the Browns are down to the 32 yard line. Nothing. Kevin Knack tried again. He's a running back from Clemson, was a standout in the U.S. Football League. Cripps ran for the San Francisco touchdown. Now a field goal for New England gives them a 10-7 lead. Joe Morris ran for the Giant touchdown. Philadelphia up on Dallas, 3-0 in the first quarter. Jim Kelly has thrown a touchdown pass to Burkett to give the Bills a 7-0 lead. New Orleans on a Dave Wilson touchdown throw up on Atlanta. The Bays are scoreless. Brings it out. He's got Kevin Mack, who's defended against nicely by inside linebacker Carl Zander. And again, third down arises for Cleveland. Trump doing an excellent job of just dinking it here and dinking it there. People in Riverfront Stadium should be very used to seeing this offense. Lindy and Fonny had it here under Forrest Gregg. Now he's got it in Cleveland. And Mack doesn't pick up as much as they want, but still makes the completion. Are just three for eight so far. 82 yards as you see, but the one throw for 66 yards on the first play of the game set up the only touchdown. It's seven to three Cleveland. Showing blitz. They pick it up and Kosar gets it away. It's knocked away though from Reggie Langhorn inside the 15 yard line. And out comes the punter, Jeff Gossett, who holds and the place kicker Mark Mosley. On that was Kosar almost gets this done. You see everybody trying to sneak up in there. 27 is Bussy. Kosar still puts the ball right on the money. Phillips 24 in coverage on Langhorn. Bernie still almost got that done. Mosley, who's been a 15-year veteran now, in his 15th year, longtime Washington Redskin, has lost some distance. Straight away kicker. This will be a 46-yarder. Got plenty behind that. But he's wide to the left. And so again, the Browns get a chance, but do not capitalize. They do hold a 7-3 lead. And this is a game of opportunities. Gossett gets the ball down. Good spot. See, mostly, mostly carry right through. He had enough there for about another 10 yards, but he knew immediately it missed it. It's a swing of that leg. He doesn't hit the ball squarely and it just sails left. Now the Bengals ready to go on offense again. First and ten with Stanley Wilson, the lone setback. And Isaiasen looking downfield. Collinsworth. Too much on it as Collinsworth running underneath the zone coverage was open. Now, now this has consistently been the Bengals' problem. Isaiasen, when he throws high, he doesn't, he comes with a roundhouse delivery. He doesn't set the ball properly. That's one of the things that got him benched when he was playing with Houston. Now watch the roundhouse. He doesn't take the ball up. He kind of roundhouses it. And that makes the ball sail a little bit. There's an easy completion that Esiason missed. Stanley Wilson did a great job knocking a blitzing linebacker. Chip Banks off the play. James Brooks. Not much there on a second and ten carry. Got about three out to the 32-yard line. Browns, as you know, Trump fell in that first game in September when Cincinnati had 257 yards rushing against them, but they missed a lot of tackles. They felt they were in position but didn't make the hold on the hits. And as a matter of fact, in our conversation last night with Bob Golick, he went back and looked at the film. He said on six rushing plays, the Bengals netted 144 yards. So there were a lot of big plays and a lot of missed tackles. Bengals now third down they need eight they're 0 for 3 on third down conversions as Iason's cooled off he's only one for his last six throwing the ball blitz against him and man he is waffled under Chip Banks coming hard he's hard to get to as Iason sacked only three times in the last five games Banks is an extraordinary talent he comes from the inside. You can see the game up front, and Banks is untouched. Easy sack for Cleveland. And now Hayes, who had a 26-yarder on his first punt, Cleveland should get good field position here. Gerald 
McNeil is back to return the punt for the Browns, standing at his 40-yard line. That's tight on it. Marcy McNeil into a fair catch at his 44-yard line. And there, the Cleveland Browns holding to a 7-3 lead will go on offense again. 33-yard punt. Be sure to stay tuned for the second half of today's NBC doubleheader. Most of you will see the Dolphins and the Rams in an interconference battle. Be sure to check your local listings for the game in your area. Your team plays here on NBC Sports. As we start down the stretch run of the season, the Cleveland Browns with the most team victories 10 since their 1980 season. Also have the best record in the conference at 8 and 2. This team has played very well considering the injuries they've had. To Mack and Biner, their two biggest offensive threats in 1985. The Browns haven't been blowing anybody out. They've been finding a way to win week after week, though. Curtis Dickey, tremendous speed, turns the corner, and Curtis Dickey is across midfield and down to the 45 yard line of Cincinnati. Well, I tell you what, you make a mistake when you set up inside of Curtis Dickey as Joe Kelly, the rookie linebacker. That's an easy 10 yard pickup Dickey with that just blazing foot speed. He hesitated for a second. Now watch the defense stop when, when he hesitates right there. All of a sudden he's outside Then he accelerates just absolutely turns it on. Kelly knocks him out of bounds. Second down in about two inches. One minute and 21 seconds left to play in the first quarter. The Cleveland Browns with a seven to three lead. They scored in their opening drive. Kevin Mack on a one yard dive after a 66 yard pass set it up. No sir. Oh he's Five open. Home run ball wide open is the rookie Webster Slaughter and he's in for a second Cleveland touchdown. A 46 yard reception by Webster Slaughter a pattern of absolute beauty. He runs the hitch and go, Don. Stopped in the middle of the pattern. Phillips bit on it. And then he went by him, and it was absolutely wide open. Webster Slaughter's 34th catch of this season. Good for his third touchdown as again the Browns catch the Cincinnati defense completely out of position. Nobody near Webster Slaughter who goes in for a second touchdown and now Mark Mosley out looking to make it a 14 to 3 game and he does. 113 to go in the first quarter as Sam White's his favorite Bengals with all that offense right now way down on their home field in the first quarter. Watch Bernie on the pump. He pumps there and Slaughter's wide open. Billups falls down but Slaughter had him beat 10 ways to Sunday. He ran the hitch and go, and Phillips bit on it. Now watch what happens here. Slaughter, when he fakes, yeah, I'm going to go short. Whoops, and five. Oh, that's a thing of beauty. Phillips has got a piece of athletic wear lying there on the ground. The part you wear underneath your pants. That's twice now. Wideouts for the Cleveland Browns have been wide open on long plays. First touchdown set up on the 66-yard throw to Reggie Langhorn. Reminded to our viewers that we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player for today's game at the conclusion of the game. Webster Slaughter, a rookie with a catch in every game. That was a very big one. He is from San Diego State, was the first player selected by the Browns in the last draft. They didn't have a number one choice. A dot for Cincinnati. They can't panic now, down 14 to 3. We're still in the first quarter. There is no reason to panic. Stay pretty much with the game plan. Cleveland, I think, now realizes they got them pretty much where they want them. Next time Cleveland gets the ball, they can go with the run, give it to Kevin Mack, eat some time off the clock, keep the ball away from the Bengal offense. And Trump, the Cleveland offensive line is doing a superb job. They're picking up everything and giving Bernie Kosar time to stand in with the blitzing pass rush coming, and he's been releasing the ball downfield for some huge plays. Here comes Tim McGee. Makes to Eddie Brown, gets across the 20, and Tim McGee leads his way out to the 29-yard line. Bengal coaches feel McGee is almost the equal of Eddie Brown as a pass receiver in his rookie year, and Brown is just about all pro quality, a 26-yard return. Let's see if Boomer now starts to fire away. Now up to Boomer. He's one of six. 
in his last seven attempts. Excuse me, his last six attempts, and it's on his shoulders. He's been high. He's missed some open receivers. James Brooks, he's in open field. And James Brooks is all the way out to midfield and maybe beyond. They spot him out of bounds at the Cleveland 49-yard line. It was a 21-yard gain. Eddie Brown threw a crush block that sprung him, 81. They got a double pull here. The guard and tackle from the right side pull. Max Montoya, 65. Walter, 63. Good lead block by Eddie Brown out front. I'm telling you, it's a 21-yard pickup for James Brooks. To that point, he had three carries for just three yards. Brooks likes to bounce to the outside, and here he goes again. This is Stanley Wilson taking it straight ahead at Cleveland down to the 45-yard line, a gain of four yards. Scoreboard, Dallas has now gone on the board at Texas Stadium to lead Philadelphia 7-3. Game clock here in Cincinnati down to 30 seconds in running. We're still in the first quarter. Bengals trailing the Cleveland Browns 14 to 3. No penalty so far. Brooks stacked. Reggie Camp, the left end, came across and got him, and so it'll bring up third down and six. First quarter is going to expire. I'm rather surprised the Bengals going with the fancy run blocking. When they go straight ahead, they seem to have better luck. Lock winds down and up. Gun sounds. First quarter is history. And the Cleveland Browns have Sam Watch and his Bengals on the short end of a 14 to 3 score. I didn't make the team my sophomore year. As the smallest man in the NFL, Gerald McNeil is used to hearing, you'll never make it. The Achievers, those who face adversity and refuse to fail. Sponsored by the U.S. Army. I did something and beat all the odds that were against me. Only 5'7", 143 pounds, McNeil wasn't even listed in the Browns media guide. you got to stay with what you believe in. If you have a dream and you want to obtain something, there should be nothing or no one in your way to stop you from that goal. Hey, that was a great answer. Where'd you learn about computers? In the Army. God, you were in the Army? Yeah. And now they're helping pay your way through college. How come you know so much? How do you think I got here? Qualify for the GI Bill and the Army College Fund and earn $17,000 for college for only a two-year enlistment or $25,200 for a four-year enlistment. What you doing here? Airborne. You were airborne? Find your future in the Army. You used to jump out of airplanes? Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy back at Cincinnati. The Cleveland Browns, winners of six of their last seven games, have it all going their way again to date, Trump. They've been playing great football, and the breaks have been with them also. Yeah, Don, you look at early stages of football games, and you try to, to gauge psychologically what's happening. The ball has bounced all for Cleveland. Boomer Esiason is not having a, fir a good first half. He's missed some open receivers. And when you play a quality opponent like the division-leading Cleveland Browns, you can't miss opportunities like the Cincinnati Bengals have. So... They're going to continue to run the ball, but what has to happen is Boomer Esiason's got to collect himself and got to get back out there and throw the ball a little more accurately. Well, Boomer's about ready to go now. He's bringing the offense out. Start the second quarter. They'll be going third down and 10 at the 49-yard line of Cleveland. Browns, as we mentioned, have not had good fortune here at Cincinnati, have not won here in the last four tries. First quarter numbers, a lot of offense, a very long first quarter. Took 50 minutes on the regular clock. Boomer, the big, strong left-hander, standing in. He's got Eddie Brown, and what a brilliant open field tackle. Chris Rockins, Ray safety comes up and sticks him a hard hitter from Oklahoma State. And it's Frank Minifield. He's 31, Rockins is 37. The thing that the Browns have been able to do to this point in the ball game, Don, is they have kept Cincinnati in third down in long yardage situations. It's a great open field tackle by Minifield. Browns in his zone. Once again, fourth down in about three or four. And so the punter's back out. Jeff Hayes ready to boot the ball for Cincinnati. It's a 14 to three game. Bengals are trailing Cleveland. Always got to watch for a block here. Yeah. 
That's not much. Now yeah, but it's out of bounds at the 17 yard line and Browns have been going with very good field position at times after punts particularly after they recovered a fumbled punt that was just a 27 yarder and we'll be right back to Riverfront after this. Superbly equipped new breed of compact car, Dodge Shadow. With its 550 protection plan, two or four door availability, affordable price, the new Dodge Shadow is going to cast a giant shadow across America. Dodge setting new standards of performance. Dodge, setting new standards of performance. By the U.S. Army, a place to be all you can be. And by Canon, from personal copiers to high-performance copying systems, the choice is Canon. Here come the Browns out of the huddle, leading 14 to 3. Browns offensive coordinator Lindy Infanti knows the Bengals well. He coached here at Cincinnati. Now on first down, Gosar again checks and changes his lineup. Again, he's given time, and again, he has an open receiver, but this one's a bit far. So it'll be second down and 10. The Browns were a dominant rushing team last year, averaging over almost 143 yards a game, but it's tailed off to 100 this year. Coach Schottenheimer, a man who believes in deeds, not dialogue. He's got quite a few coats, old Marty. He's a quotable coach, and his team is playing like the division leader in this first half. Picking up the blitz, protecting Bernie Kosar, shutting down the Bengals' run when the Cincinnati is on offense. Brown's averaging only 2.9 yards per rush on 10 tries. They have only 29 yards rushing. But Kosar has been unloading the long balls, and now he throws a slant that's good out to the 25-yard line. Herman Fontenot coming out of the backfield makes his first catch. Fontenot's 42nd reception of this season. A free agent from LSU has helped the Browns' offense a lot. Once again, a brilliant job of reading the blitz walk. Kosar goes with a quick, quick slant. The Bengals have tried to stay with that blitz, and it's not worked. Ozar's had time. He's now 5 of 12 for 138 yards and a touchdown. He can read the blitz. He's in control out there. Cool, calm, and collected. And he's only in his second year. He is younger, actually, than Vinny Testaverde, who is now quarterbacking at Miami of Florida. And third and short, Cleveland goes to a power dive, and Reggie Williams makes the tackle, but it's good for a first down. Kevin Mack runs for the first down. And you can certainly see the difference between these two teams. A good push by the offensive line. Williams, along with Babb, Pazuli leads up in there. But the thing is, Cleveland's had third down and one to convert to first down. Cincinnati's had third down and ten to convert to third first downs. Browns with 14 points. They're tough to beat when they get 20 or more. They're 9 and 1 when they've scored 20 or more points. Their defense has helped them win a lot of close, low scoring games. Kevin Mack on a straight ahead drive, but first and 10, he got a hit for about five yards. Eagles with a second field goal have now come back to within a point of Dallas.
It is a doubleheader day on NBC Sports. Most of you will be seeing the Rams and the Dolphins as the second game. Also a big one at the Coliseum in Los Angeles where Kansas City and the Raiders, a team on the ropes right now, but both those clubs still in playoff contention will meet. And Seattle goes to San Diego. Much improved of recent weeks are the San Diego Chargers. Markers go down on a second down and sixth play. Trump. That's on Paul Farron, offensive left tackle. Came out of his stance a little early. First penalty of the day on either team. Ball start, number 74, offense, still second down. I think Trump, those officials were anxious to throw the flags. There were five on the field. <laughs> <laughs> Have a covey of flags. There's Farron. He's got the outside pickup. You can see the Bengals again going with the blitz. And he's replacing Ricky Bolden, who's been out for a number of weeks with a broken arm. Bolden in uniform on the sideline today. Bengals now second down and 11 come with six defensive backs, Don. Big difference in this game has been Kosar's ability to hit the long pass. One for 66 yards set up a touchdown. Look at that stick. Another for 46 was a touchdown. Ozzie Newsom comes out to the 32 yard line. Where he is pounded by David Fulcher. First year strong safety who's as big as a linebacker, 6'3, 228. Ozzie not having the kind of season he's had in the past, but he's got a bad ankle, he's got a bad shoulder, and he lines up every weekend, so you got to give him credit. Now in his ninth year from Alabama. Gosar and the Browns need four on third down. Fontenot 28 will be swinging out of the top of your screen. Good and Cleveland has to punt it to Cincinnati. First bad pass that Bernie's thrown. Didn't really set up very good there. Threw the ball right down into the ground. Weathers was the nearest receiver. Back deep now for Cincinnati. We have 10:40 to go in the first half. It is a 14-3 game. The underdog Cleveland Browns, who will win the division with a victory today, if they get the victory, are out in front. McGee catching the ball. He did not fair catch it. He moves out to the 25-yard line. 50-yard punt and a seven-yard return. They've been waiting this day. The Battle of Ohio and Cincinnati. Riverfront sold out long ago for Cleveland and the Bengals and the Browns are holding a 14 to 3 lead. Say, these must be Jack's new Canon personal copiers. Great color. Yeah, and they copy in five. You want to see? Go ahead. Make my day. Everything you need to copy with is in this replaceable cartridge. I'll do that. Good thing Canon has PCs for every personality, even pushy agents. Lighten up, Jack. These new Canon personal copiers are light. Put one in my car. <sighs> What a guy. Personal copyist for every personality. For information, call toll-free 1-800-OK-CANON. Someone put a bender in my left front fender. Leave it to the good hands people. I got it in the door of my 4 by 4 Allstate makes an accident a little easier to take. We offer a repair guarantee, and in most cases, we'll give you a settlement on the spot. I parked in a lot in a place that I trusted, but when I returned, my window was busted. Leave it to the good hands people. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Whenever I get the chance, I head for these mountains. Of course, I enjoy these mountains, too, the mountains of Bush beer. And now you can enjoy the Bush Holiday Sweepstakes. Grand prize is a trip for six to ski in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. It's easy to enter. For further details, look for this display of participating retailers. So come on, head for these mountains. With a little luck, you'll be heading for these mountains, too. Saturday, the NFL plays here when the Broncos battle the Seahawks. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL 86. Be sure to join us next Saturday for more NFL action. The closing game of the regular season for Denver and Seattle. The Seahawks back in form after blowing out the Raiders. 
Denver now the winner of the AFC West but looking for home field in the playoffs. End zone look at Stanley Wilson as he weaves up the middle. Gets ahead to about the 27 yard line. We're going to give you the end zone shot here to try to examine what Boomer Assassin is doing when he's throwing the ball. He has had problems in this first half. Two for his last seven, six of 11 total. Started out very strong, had trouble of late. James Brooks, good cutback move, and James Brooks with excellent balance takes it all the way out to the 40 yard line. He got 12, and it's a first down for the Bengals. And you can see that 53, Anthony Griggs, at James Brooks squarely in his sights and Brooks makes the little move to break the tackle he cuts back and Griggs is standing right in front of him right there and somehow Brooks accelerates by him for a first down Chris Rockins finally tackled him six carries 32 yards now James Brooks Whistle blows the play dead. There might have been a procedure penalty against the Bengals, stopping the clock with nine minutes and 12 seconds to play in the first half. Right guard, offense, still first down. Browns will be back at Cleveland Stadium next Sunday to close out regular season play. They'll go against San Diego, while the Bengals will be at home to play the slumping New York Jets, a team that has come completely a cropper. 10 and 1 start, and the wheels not only fell off, they flew off that machine. All their defensive injuries, suddenly the offense can produce nothing. Once again, Bengals in long yardage situation. End zone look again as Stanley Wilson takes on tacklers and gets ahead to about the 37 yard line. First and 15 play, and the Browns shut it down. Sam Clancy, a defensive end, was on the play. Cleveland's defense not giving up big plays in this game. Schottenheimer with an excellent game plan, particularly that opening play. After the opening kickoff, first play from scrimmage, a long ball, and it went 66 yards. Cosar to Langhorn to set up a touchdown. Now, here's a throw in the wrong side of Chris Collinsworth of the 42 yard line. And for Dixon, had a play on the ball. Collinsworth was open, but Zayason was looking for an outside pattern. Let's watch as Zayason's arm motion. Big, tall quarterback like this, watch him pat the ball. Very bad habit. He can really gun it in there, but when you pat the ball, that's saying, all right, he's open, but you can see he's off target, and Collinsworth is open. That pat is a habit that some quarterbacks have that they don't even know they're doing it. But the Bengals now faced with another third down along. They're 0 for 5 in third downs. Two wide receivers to either side for Cincinnati as we look again from the end zone on a third down and 12 play. Stands in, he throws, it is incomplete at the 44-yard line of Cleveland. He was going again to Collinsworth, hand for Dixon with him stride for stride. And so the high-power Cincinnati Bengals offense, which graded out number one in the NFL through 14 weeks of play after ripping the New England defense for almost 600 yards last Sunday, has not been hitting big plays today, and the Browns will get it back again on another Cincinnati punt. This doesn't help either. Just a 28.7 yard average. Cleveland's had great field position all day long. Gerald McNeil back. He's broken an 84 yard punt return this season. Well hit ball by Hayes. He is congratulated by the crowd as looking for the outside is Gerald McNeil. 40 yard punt, a five yard return. As Boomer is looking for answers on the sideline now. 754 to go and Cleveland still with the 11 point lead. The front wheel drive Dodge Lancer is the performance sedan that will thrill you all the way to the red line. Hold you to the dotted line. Cover you down the line. 
and impress you with its bottom line. Dodge Lancer, with prices starting at $98.52. Dodge, setting new standards of performance. It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. The kids really like what we got them for Christmas. Radio Shack Space Patrol walkie-talkies. They're terrific outdoor fun. They have flexible antennas to withstand rugged use. And built-in Morse code keys with the code alphabet on the front, so they can talk or send messages in code. The kids like them, and I love them. Come in, Space Patrol. Time to report for dinner. Space Patrol walkie-talkies, only at Radio Shack. Discover the new fragrance of America. Lady Stetson, you're free. Country proud, playing in the big leagues. You're all American, with a new fragrance all your own. Lady Stetson, an exciting blend of contrasts like America itself. All American, Lady Stetson. Every other woman in the world wishes she were you. Tonight, Eddie Murphy's the crook, Nick Nolte's the cop. They shook up Beverly Hills, now they're tearing up San Francisco in the outrageous 48 hours tonight. San Francisco now leading at New England, 13 to 10, a most important game for the 49ers. Somebody's going to win that AFC East by default, the way they're playing. <laughs> Jets from 10 and 1 to awful, although the Pittsburgh Steelers are a whole lot better than their record. Bengal coaches say they're the hardest hitting team in the league, at least the, the ones they played. Kosar looking deep on two play fakes. He throws, and it's a completion out to the 48 yard line. As Webster Slaughter, the rookie, comes down with a 21 yard catch. Back down on the play by. Phillips was the man in coverage, man-to-man -man coverage, and when you beat a defensive cornerback long with that hitch and go, the shortstop is going to be wide open. Watch Bernie. As the game goes on, he gets more and more sidearm, but this, once again, is on the money. And that's a direct result of Slaughter's touchdown catch. Now, every fake, the defensive back is going to hang off of it. He's got two for 68 yards. Webster Slaughter, one for a touchdown. Browns with a 14 to 3 lead and a first down. Second quarter. Long ball, another great touch pass, but it's lost at the 20 yard line by Slaughter. Bernie Kosar with a perfectly arced ball. Slaughter adjusting to it in flight, hands on it, but couldn't hold on. Very nearly another big hit for the Cleveland passing game. The thing that amazes me about Bernie Kosar, Don, is that. Very seldom do you see him set up properly, but he still is able to throw the ball deep down the field so accurately. Sometimes it's scary. That was right on the money. Good defense by Phillips. Brings up second and ten. Gosar's passed for 166 yards and a touchdown today, seven of 16. Most importantly, he's hit the long pass. That's been the difference, along with his pass blocking, it's given him time. Now he tries to screen it back to Harry Holt at tight end, but the rush was great. Reggie Williams, the veteran outside backer, put the heat on Kosar. Brings up third down and long, third and ten. He rolls away from the rush. You can see everybody's coming after him. But he doesn't get sacked, although he does get tackled and put on the ground. Kosar is a tough kid, hates the training room. Reggie Williams has had some big games of late. He had two sacks last weekend at New England. Fontenot standing right in. Make sure he has the play in case of a changeup. Crowd noise very intense, particularly when the Browns are on offense. Throw, and there's a caught by Clarence Weathers inside the 35. It is not. And so Cleveland will have to punt the ball to the Bengals. And now we'll see Trump if Isaacson can crank up the offense. He hasn't done it yet. Other than the first try that resulted in the field goal. I will tell you, Clarence Weathers was open. Gozar's got something wrong with his wrist, it looks like. He's going to the sideline. He won't look for a trainer or a doctor or anything. He wants nothing to do with medical attention. We'll watch his wrist and see if he's all right. Maybe his finger. Mike Pagel's the backup, the former Indianapolis Colts quarterback. Well hit ball downfield. Nicely hit down, and here's Tim McGee. Fair catching it at the nine yard line of Cincinnati. Let's see if we can see what happens here. 
Look at his. He's holding his finger. Looked like he got it hit. Maybe hit a helmet or something. But he's going to hide it. He does not want medical attention. I well remember a few years ago when Bernie Kosar led Miami of Florida to the upset of Nebraska in the Orange Bowl for a national championship. And Bowl Day 87 is coming up on NBC Sports, leading up with the Rose Bowl. Followed by the Orange Bowl and then the national championship game from the Fiesta Bowl with number one ranked and number two ranked Miami and Penn State going for the title. Here now is a handoff to Stanley Wilson in Cleveland in position. Gives him no place to cut back to. Anthony Griggs was in there to pop him. And the Bengals consistently running the ball on first down and then when forced to throw they're doing it. I think they're trying to protect Boomer as best they possibly can. He's not had a good second quarter. When he's hot he's terrific. When he's off he's average. Brown's getting the lead of taking Cincinnati away from that pound away running game. But I want to catch to James Brooks. These moves. Brooks has a first down or does. Yeah he does out to the 22 yard line. Now we go back to the play where it appeared that Bernie Kosar may have gotten hurt. This is the half roll. Uh, he sets up. Let's see if we can see what happens. It doesn't seem to be anything wrong with him there. He's fine there. He's got a towel over his hand. Schottenheimer talking to him. He hates medical attention. Isaiahson, first down throw again to James Brooks, looking to break tackles, but the Browns hold on. Cleveland very aggressive, attacking defensively. Getting a hold of the elusive James Brooks and knocking him down. Brooks coming into the game with almost 1,600 yards total offense for the Bengals and rushing and receiving. Pretty obvious the Browns are taking away the wide receivers, Eddie Brown and Chris Collinsworth. Now, watch once again. He falls on his hand, and that's when he got up shaking it. That was on the screen, the attempted screen pass to Harry Holt. It looks like he's got ice on his wrist. He's kind of shaking his hand a little bit but he'll sit there all by himself and continue playing four catches for James Brooks now they go to Stanley Wilson who runs the ball and is driven back as he gets to the 27 yard line Browns very in position on defense again the cutback runner has no place to go that was good for only a gain of a yard Brown's not really trying to make penetration they're staying at the line of scrimmage and shutting down the cutbacks Looks like Big Daddy Harrison on the ground. He is 78 for the Cleveland Browns. The 424 you see is what's left to play in the first half with the Cleveland Browns leading the Cincinnati Bengals 14 to 3 as an 11 year veteran Carl Big Daddy Harrison is down on the ground for the Browns has given them a lot this season. Former Philadelphia Eagle Cleveland defense features a couple of former Eagles. Ray Ellis has done a lot for the Browns most of the season in free safety or strong safety. Looks like an arm injury of some sort. Forearm, hand, not really sure. Obviously not his legs. The Bengals unable to unleash their big play offense in this game other than the first drive when they took it down close and got a field goal, but that's been all they're scoring. Behind Kosar, the Browns have taken a 14 to 3 lead. He set up one touchdown and then he's gone. Vince Lombardi said when the game is on the line Paul Horning is the greatest player I've ever seen. He led the Green Bay Packers to three world championships was twice the league's most valuable player and he led the NFL three straight years in scoring. I present the golden boy Paul Horning. It's been a long journey for me from the frozen gridiron in Green Bay to here in Canton Ohio but it's a trip I wouldn't have missed for the world. Your journey to the Pro Football Hall of Fame will probably be a lot shorter, but it's one that every fan should make. It's all here, the teams, the stars, the records, so you can see the men and the great plays that have been a part of the game we call pro football. For me, being here in the Hall of Fame, it's like crossing that last goal line. I feel like I'm at home, and I know Vince would have thought I was a winner. The Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. Don't miss it. This message furnished by the National Football League. 
Cleveland quarterback Bernie Kosar apparently jammed the middle finger on his throwing hand on the last Cleveland possession. They've applied ice to it down here. As he waits on the sideline to come back in. Right now, the Bengals have the ball, though, at their 29 yard line. Wide to the near side comes Collinsworth and Tim McGee. Four wideouts in the game. Catches the ball for a first down and gets out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. Found it at the 36. So Brooks, who is so quick, almost impossible to cover. He was the product of one of the great trades in the NFL. At least for Cincinnati, they sent an out-of-shape fullback to San Diego, 260-pound at least. Pete Johnson got James Brooks in, and he has been a dominant force in their offense. Third down's been a problem, though, Trump, for Cincinnati. That's the first one they've converted in this first half, and on the Browns doing an outstanding job of taking the wide receivers away from the Bengals. Brooks, the only receiver open in this first half. Hansford Dixon and Frank Menefield, excellent covering cornerbacks. Here is a quick trap up the middle, and Stanley Wilson rockets ahead for a gain of 13 yards and a first down. He's to midfield. This may be the drive of the season for the Bengals if they lose this game. They still have a shot to stay in the playoffs, but it is remote. If they win this game, then they're tied with Cleveland. And this drive at the end of the first half is 348 and ticking, and they get the ball to start the second half. Could have the entire season written all over it. Very interesting point. Bengals were very optimistic coming in, favored on their home field. Victors five of the last six times against Cleveland and four straight here, and they dominated the Browns at Cleveland Stadium in September. Rushing for 257 yards, but the Browns have played much better football today. They've made the big plays, and defensively, they're just not out of position. Here is a swing pass, and here comes James Brooks as he is down to the 45 yard line. Open field tackle saved a very big gain. Eddie Johnson came over and ran him down. There's a guy shows up with his game face on. Oh, Eddie Johnson can play. Put him in a tough spot, too, try to get out there in the flat to get to James Brooks. Very difficult, but Eddie can get it done. He's had bruised ribs over the last couple of weeks wearing the flak jacket today, but in big games, you can count on Eddie Johnson. Brooks catching a lot of balls. He has six today for 63 yards. Second down. Brooks on the catching end, but now trying to go straight ahead. There's not much there. Clay Matthews was on the play for Cleveland. On each time Cincinnati's come with that delay handoff, Cleveland's been there to stop it. Each time Cincinnati's come with the quick hitter, they gain a lot of yards. As you were pointing out, Trump, a most important drive for the Bengals. They trail Cleveland 14 to 3. Browns with a victory today win the AFC Central, a division they won a year ago with an 8 and 8 record. Browns going for an 11th win today. They came in at 10 and 4. Bengals at 9 and 5. Brooks. Nothing but Browns there to get him. Sam Clancy grabbed him, and a third down play is thrown back, a loss of three yards. As Cleveland is really in tune defensively. They seem to know what's coming. Tried to run the reverse. Sam Clancy, the veteran. He stays right there, and then Frank Minifield on the cleanup. He made the hit. Got a dove into the pile. It's not unusual. Watch Minifield. He's in there trying to knock somebody's legs down. Almost got his own player in Sam Clancy. Two minute warning, 155 to play in the half, and the Bengals are going to punt it back to Cleveland. They have to. Two minute warning. So the Browns with an important defensive play stop Cincinnati's closing drive of the second quarter. You might get caught out in the middle of nowhere with a dead battery, but I won't. This is a Delco maintenance free battery. And when this green eye is showing, it means I've got all the starting power I need, up to 770 cranking amps. If you think your battery's fading fast, I'd start thinking Delco. Now through January 3rd, get a $5 rebate on most Delco batteries. See a participating AC Delco retailer for details. 
Never wait for trouble. Whenever I get the chance, I head for these mountains. Of course, I enjoy these mountains, too, the mountains of Bush beer. And now you can enjoy the Bush Holiday Sweepstakes. Grand prize is a trip for six to ski in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. It's easy to enter. For further details, look for this display of participating retailers. So come on, head for these mountains. With a little luck, you'll be heading for these mountains, too. A ranger never takes the easy way out. You're reaching deep inside you for things you never know. Go! That's why getting into the rangers is tough, and the training is tough. Be all that you can be. So it makes me feel like I'm part of something really special. Be all that you can be. And I'm not the only one. Find your future in the army. Bengals ready to punt the ball as they have come up to fourth down that closing drive taken away from a fine defensive play by Sam Clancy. He shut down the ball carrier on a third down trap run try a delay and now the Browns will get it back with a 14 to 3 lead. Gerald McNeil the ice cube is back waiting for the kick. Kick downfield by Jeff Hayes. Yeah, they're going to do it again. Don Cricky with Bob Trumpy. The Cleveland Browns coming in as an underdog. They haven't won here since 81. But right now, uh, look like a weatherman pointing there, but they're standing pretty tall today. And you said you don't think the Bengals have a good team for coming back. No, they do not. And that graphic proves it right there in front of you. I think they know that. I think they realize the situation they're in. That may have been the drive for the season right there. That last one. Cleveland stops it on a big play by Sam Clancy now. The Bengals get it to start the second half, but Cleveland's got it going all their way in this first half, Don. Let's see if Kosar tries to get more now. The ball positioned at the 27-yard line of Cleveland. Just a 20-yard punt by Hayes. Kevin Mack used sparingly today. He's troubled by an injured left shoulder. Gets out of bounds at about the 33-yard line. Our producer today for NBC Sports is Larry Cirillo. Our director, John Gonzalez, at halftime will be going to NFL 86 in New York. As just about every game has a playoff bearing today. Rounds come out. Slaughter on the right flank. at the top of your screen in the slot. Bengals jumping in and out as Kosar tantalizes him with another long count. Here's Kevin Mack head down on a second and five. He got eight and a first down. I know Cleveland. When we go first to New York in NFL 86 at halftime, Bob Costas will be talking to Brian Bosworth, voted the best linebacker in America this season, the Sooner from Oklahoma. We'll be back to Cincinnati for the final 135 right after this of the first half. Dodge salutes those who strive for victory with this edition of The Winners. If we need a big play or something, I want to be the one that people come to for it. I don't like to depend on other people to get things done for me. I want to do them myself. From an unheralded baby-faced rookie, Joe Klecko became a fierce all-pro in a few short seasons. In hard-hearted New York, he became a hard-hat hero to those who appreciate his blue-collar style of play that makes Joe Klecko a winner. You're going down a road behind the wheel of the new Dodge Dakota. It's the first true mid-size pickup ever made. Inside, room for three. With optional 3.9 liter V6, the Dakota doesn't shy away from hard work. Cross into Dakota territory. Dodge Dakota, the new state of the American truck. The Browns holding to a 14 to three lead. 135 to go in the first half. Passes to six different receivers in this game so far. 
Another throw and a catch to the sure-handed Brian Brennan on a first down play. He is ahead for about 10 yards. Looks like a first down. And the Cleveland Browns want more. They are not about to sit on this 14 to 3 lead with 120 to go in the first half. Brown's an exceptionally well prepared football team. Here's a throw downfield just a bit out. Too much for Clarence Weathers as he goes out of bounds. It'll bring up second down and 10. And the clock is stopped with a minute to play, and there's also a marker down. Offside Cincinnati, first and five for Cleveland. It's going all their way, even when they have a, an incomplete pass, they get a penalty. The ball's bouncing their way. Offside, number 73, defense, still first down. This game seems means so much both ways. Should the Bengals win today, and they'll be a big favorite to beat the Jets next week. If they won their last two, the Bengals would win the division. Probably have home field advantage that week off means so much. They lose this. They'll be an outside team just to be a wild card. And the Browns will have wrapped up a second straight AFC title. AFC Central title. First and five. Going downfield to Langhorn incomplete at the 20 yard line. And that'll bring up second down and five with 102 to play in the first half. And one of the big things that I think Cleveland done so well today on first down they've averaged 8.7 yards. And that's put them in a situation where they're second and short third and short. Bengals on the other hand have come up with an awful lot of third and tens. They've only converted one third down in the first half. This last time these two teams met the Bengals did an outstanding job of converting third downs did almost 60 percent for the game in September. Process remarkable a second year player looks like he's been in the league as a starter 10 years. Just about mistake free. Downfield it goes to Clarence Weathers. That's and a first. Be, and it looks like he's got it. A first down for Cleveland. They're looking to get in field goal range for Mark Mosley. Co side of Brian Brennan, that undersized overachiever, again comes down with a tough catch, and it's a timeout call by the Browns as they are getting very close to Mark Mosley range. 33 seconds to play in the half and it has belonged to Cleveland. The Browns leading 14-3. Done an excellent job Bernie Kosar has is reading the defense. There you see next to Marty Schottenheimer in the hat. Lindy Infante. Even though the Browns didn't have a first round draft choice this year, my opinion, Infante was their first round draft choice. Kosar also has picked up this Lindy Infante offense very, very quickly. People in Cincinnati, look at that. Seven different receivers. Twice this season, he's thrown catches to eight different receivers, and once he threw receptions to nine different receivers. He hasn't that got that classic throwing motion. That's the look at this. This is a, a standout the Cleveland cornerbacks have been taking Collinsworth out of the game so far, and Eddie Brown has three for 28 yards. But neither has caught the big ball, the long downfield ball that the Cleveland Browns have used to set up their scores. That is the story of the game. Third down conversions and the Browns cornerback shutting out the wide receivers, basically, of the Bengals. Kosar has passed for almost 100 and 200 yards in the first half. He has 191 on 10 completions, one for a touchdown, one set up a touchdown. He's had two 400-yard-plus passing days in the last five games, Bernie Kosar. Second and short. Here's the blitz, and again, he gets it away, but throws it away before he's hit. Again, checking the scoreboard before the half closes, and we go to NFL 86. San Francisco's gone to halftime, and Roger Craig's touchdown run that brought them from behind. 16-10 up on New England. The Giants putting away the St. Louis Cardinals 17 to nothing. Buffalo Bills got a touchdown run from Greg Bell to go with a Jim Kelly touchdown pass and the Indianapolis Colts are one game closer at least working at it to getting Vinny Testaverde. Mark Mosley waiting patiently. 
Christian Lee for his chance. They go to Kevin Mack. He shut down at the 29 yard line. That's enough for a first down, though, Don. Yes, it is. Game clock down to 22 Time seconds. Mark. Cleveland Browns call Time another Mark. timeout. Third timeout this half. This has been impressive. The Browns have driven from their own 27. Taken a very little time to get down here in just about Mark Mosley's range off his last field goal attempt. He had, had enough distance to make a 50 yarder. It was wide, but he hit it very well. Oklahoma's All American linebacker Brian Bosworth, a halftime guest today on NFL 86. A lot of people wondering if he'll come out of Oklahoma following this season. He'll graduate with his class, but he does have another year of eligibility coming. In fact, he made academic All-American. A lot of people wonder where he gets his haircut, too. It takes special talent. It's a great advertisement for barbers, though. He looks like a barber pole himself. <laughs> the Boz can play. You're saying that with the Boz 1,200 miles away. Be you sure to stay it. tuned also for the second half of today's NBC doubleheader. Most of you will see the Dolphins and the Rams in an interconference battle. Be sure to check your local listings for the game in your area. Your team plays here on NBC Sports. Vinny Testaverde got the Heisman Trophy this past week in New York. Jerry Kramer spoke at the dinner. Said there were three reasons he retired from football. Alex Karras, Merlin Olson, and Bubba Smith. Said now he looks at television and... Alex Karras is a middle-aged marshmallow. Merlin's selling posies. Bubba's a dance instructor for workout with aerobics with Bubba. The things are changing. Right now, on first down, dropping to throw is Bernie Kosar in the flat, broken up nicely. Ray Horton coming across and tipping the ball away, and that brings up second down with time of the essence now, 17 seconds to go in the half. Thing this drive is done if Cleveland gets no points whatsoever and I'd say 10 more yards they're guaranteed in Mark Mosley's range it has added points to the board the Bengals start with the ball to begin the second half and this Cleveland defense has done an outstanding job in shutting down the Bengals offense and the Cleveland offense has not made a mistake the cry of defense arises here at Riverfront Stadium in the flat, Slaughter gets the ball and goes out of bounds to stop the clock with 12 seconds to play, and now they are surely in Mark Mosley range. As the longtime Redskin waits on the sidelines, and here he comes. Picked up as a free agent when Matt Barr went down, making a tackle against the Pittsburgh Steelers a few weeks ago. Suffered serious damage to his left knee that required a four-hour operation, but the doctors are optimistic that Matt Barr will be back with the Browns kicking next season. What did his brother tell us in Seattle last Monday? If you're going to hurt a leg for a kicker, that's the leg to hurt. 39-yarder. Used to be the soccer-style kickers were unusual. Now there's only one straight-ahead booter left. And Mark Mosley shows he can still do it right. As he drills it with seven seconds to play in the first half, and the underdog Cleveland Browns extend their lead to 17 to 3. As you know, Trump, from playing here for 10 years, Cincinnati used to be Cleveland Brown country before they had a franchise. Still, an awful lot of people here in Cincinnati have stayed with Cleveland. In years past, when these two teams met in Cincinnati, and there wasn't a lot at stake except bragging rights in the state of Ohio, about half the stadium was Cleveland Brown fans. Now the story of this game is that graphic we had before and that is the Bengals success when they lead at half as opposed to the Bengals lack of success when they trail at half. Those are remarkable numbers and shocking. The Bengals do not do well as you see when they're down at halftime and they're going to be today down by a substantial margin 17 to 3 just seven seconds left in the half and Cleveland will kick it off. Sam Watch and his Bengals, who've had a dominant running game, averaging almost five yards a carry, haven't been able to use it much today because they fell behind early. They've gone to the passing game, and it hasn't been clicking, and the Cleveland defense has had a lot to do with that. Now here's another stat, too, to support Cincinnati and really worry Sam White. The Browns, when they score 20 points or more in a game, are 9-1. and one. It is going Cleveland's way.
down still three short of 20 but they're having a big day offensively with a whole half to play. Three hopper goes downfield it's picked up by a linebacker running the ball down the field now like Ron Simpkins ran the ball and he has got it out to the 38 yard line. So that is the end of the first half. The Cincinnati Bengals are not cheered off the field as Boomer Esiason not having a good day. And the Cleveland Browns and Bernie Kosar surely are. An excellent first half by the Cleveland Browns. A perfect illustration of game preparation and execution as they take a 17 to 3 lead. NFL 86 halftime activities will continue in a moment. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station with the score. 17 to 3 Cleveland. Tonight, celebrate a heartwarming Christmas at our house. Merry Christmas. Then on Valerie, when Dad's grounded at home, life's a scream. I guess I can skip the aerobics this morning. And on Easy Street, are Eleanor and Quentin gone for good? Ding dong, the way she said. All right! Tonight. This Christmas, don't just buy any TV or VCR, buy one from Mace. Here's why. First, there's Mace's brand name selection, including RCA, GE, Zenith, Sony, JVC, Magnavox, Panasonic, and Sharp. And then there's Mace's own factory authorized service department, where they do all their own repair work on every TV and VCR they sell. Plus, there's Mace's price, guaranteed lowest. Ask for details. With a Mace TV or VCR, this is bound to be one of the best Christmases you ever saw. This holiday, for less than the cost of a home exerciser, you can get an Olympic-style pool, racks and racks of free weights, a banked and cushioned jogging track, miles of life cycles, wall-to-wall -wall aerobics, and the most advanced machines in existence. Beat the 87 price increase, two people for the price of one, or 50% off dues at Scandinavian. Of course, you could still get this. Lovely Cheryl Lab, Monday on Entertainment Tonight. Welcome back to our NFL 86 studios in New York. Bob Costas with Paul McGuire and Ahmad Rashad. First of all, in the game you've all been watching, the Browns with that 17-3 lead over the Bengals. The Mark Mosley field goal of 39 yards just before the half, giving them the two-touchdown advantage. So, Marty Schottenheimer's team may be on the verge of clinching it in the AFC Central, but there's a long way to go. Here it is early. Reggie Langhorn is on the receiving end of a 66-yarder from Bernie Kozar, and it sets up a one-yard scoring run by Kevin Mack for a 7-0 lead. Then after a Jim Breach field goal, it's Kozar back at work again. It's 7-3 Browns, and he makes it 14-3 as Webster Slaughter beats Lewis Billups. In he goes, 46-yarder. Then the Mosley field goal for the 17-3 lead at halftime. And the Browns looking for their 11th victory of the year and trying to drop the Bengals out of the race for the title in the Central Division, although the Bengals would still have a crack at a wild card. I'm up. Bob, you know, in the past, Cincinnati hasn't been a good come-from-behind team. They're behind now, and they're in trouble because what happens is Cleveland has such a good running game that they can not only control the ball, but also the clock, which will force Cincinnati to try to make big plays in the second half. When you try to force big plays, you come up with a lot of mistakes. They could be in trouble. Paul. Well, you know, when you look at Cleveland, what, what they're doing, and they've done it to other teams this year, what makes them so good is the fact that they have two corners that can play that man-to-man. -man. Ahmad, you know how important that is. That frees up two safeties. That frees up your linebackers. And the only guy for Cincinnati that's doing anything in the first half is Brooks. And we knew that he can do it. He's, gonna, he's doing it running. He's also doing it receiving. But they can't win with just one man. All right, the 49ers are in front at Foxborough. That game is at halftime, and they lead the Patriots 16-10. to Roger Craig and Joe Cribbs each have short scoring runs for San Francisco. The Giants, with Joe Morris rushing for 90 yards in the first half and a pair of touchdowns, a 17-0 lead at home against the Cardinals. The Giants now playing for the right to host the NFC Championship game if they should meet the Bears. Both those clubs are 12-2, and two, so they each have incentive. Although they have clinched their respective divisions, they want the best record overall in the conference. Dallas gets an 84-yard touchdown run from Herschel Walker, longest run from scrimmage in the league this year, and they lead at home against the Eagles 7-6. Matt Cavanaugh is at quarterback for the injured Randall Cunningham for Philadelphia. Buffalo and Indianapolis, Jim Kelly with a long touchdown pass to Chris Burkett early and a 14-0 lead at the half at the Hoosier Dome. This is Ron Myers 
first game at home as the Colts coach. They won on the road at Atlanta in his debut a week ago. Here's that touchdown pass I talked about. Kelly rolls right. He throws on the run, and almost effortlessly it gets there. 42 yards to Burkett behind a couple of defenders. But then... Kelly was shaken up after he was hit by Scott Keller and Donnell Thompson, replaced at quarterback by Frank Reich for the remainder of the half. This is second quarter action. Reich hits Greg Bell, 18-yard catch and run down to the one. Bell scores on the next play, 14-0. They've now gone to the third at the Hoosier Dome. They go to the third in Atlanta. Dave Wilson's first quarter touchdown pass of seven yards to Eric Martin gives the Saints a 7-0 lead over the Falcons. Green Bay at Tampa Bay, and in the Battle of the Bays, Randy Wright with a six-yard run. That's the Green Bay quarterback in the second quarter and a 7-0 lead for the Packers. They're playing now in the third, which brings us to the subject of the Testa Verde Derby. And in that one, Indianapolis has the inside track. Now, of course, it's not certain that even if they get that first draft choice, that they'll keep it and select Testa Verde. Robert Ursay will hear plenty of offers, lucrative packages from other teams interested in the Miami quarterback. But right now, the Colts are 1-13, and they are losing at home in the third quarter to the Buffalo Bills. When we come back, we'll have an interview with Oklahoma linebacker Brian Bosworth. That's right after these messages from your local stations. This holiday season, a tribute to the American family. For three consecutive nights, you are invited to spend a year on the life with the sons, the daughters, the friends, the lovers, and you will become a part of their family, sharing their public dreams and private moments. We're a family. A Year in the Life premieres Monday. In the stampede for your advertising dollar, standing out from the rest has always been our nature. Ameritech Pages Plus. It's the directory bred with a century of experience. The directory nine out of 10 people use. The directory more businesses rely on than any other. You can put your advertising dollar back in the pack or up front with a leader. And that's a horse of a different color. Ameritech Pages Plus. Next to the phone, there's nothing better. Bob McBride and Doreen Gensler at 6 and 11 on Channel 3 News. You can, if you want, play another year of college ball, but you can graduate and go on to the pros. What's your thinking right now? You know, I said yesterday that, uh, you know, if I made a decision that uh, I'd get started, they'd stop asking the questions and it'd make it easy on y'all and the people at Oklahoma. And that's too easy. I can't do that. I want to, I'm going to let, let it go as far as I can. And the April 13th is the last day. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at uh, uh, what I can do and, and uh, see what kind of leverage I can pull. Maybe you know L.A. or New York can draft draft higher, and, and maybe I can end up one of the two cities I want to go. Yeah, you want to play for either the Jets or Giants. Makes no difference in New York or for the Raiders. Is that it? That's right. There's very few teams in the NFL that puts defense first, and uh, I want to play for one of those two teams. Look at those linebackers you'd be joining if you went to the Giants. It, well, that's linebacker. Um, all the way you know they they possess the the quality but uh, they play a different style you know they're a power game and then they don't run as well as what i'm used to you know we just run and uh, we chase the ball but uh, you know they they like otis wilson like you know they like to punish people and uh, you know that's what i enjoy doing yeah do you enjoy punishing people not injuring them punishing them that's the game of football if you don't want to if you don't want to get hit and you don't want to be punished go play golf <laughs> You know, I, football players go out there and they expect to be hit. Uh, if they don't want to be hit, don't play. You know, stand on the sideline, just take your check and, and uh, be happy on Monday. Let's go back to the idea of playing for the Raiders. If ever a personality was cut out to play for the Raiders, I'd say you're the guy. Well, I would enjoy playing, uh, playing for the Raiders out there. Not only because of the fact that they play the way I like to play, but I'm looking at their schedule. They play 12 of their 16 games on grass field. There's a big difference than playing up here in New York where the Jets play 13 of their 16 games on, uh, in uh, East Rutherford. And that's, that's a situation, that you, it's a factor that you really have to involve yourself in. There's a lot of players getting hurt on this grass, on this turf field. Um, that's, that's a very key factor. Now here's, to me, the key question. If you were already playing in New York or L.A., there's many stylists who can do this number on your head. But where do you find a guy to do the job like this in Norman, Oklahoma? 
Well, it's a young lady, it's, uh, but she's from New York. She has that New York style. And, yeah. Uh, I've, unfortunately, I've never, I haven't seen a style like this up here yet, but if I come up here, maybe the, maybe some of the kids or maybe even some of the grown-ups would enjoy a hairstyle like this. It's, it's, it's not just the cut, but multiple colors and a little a little violet or purple uh, on, on in the back, and yeah. uh, the Boz earring says Boz on the ear. It's nice. Yeah, well, we're, still, we're adding color back to football. Football got away from color. It almost got to black and white for a while, and uh, I think the McMahons, the... The, the Bosworths, the, the people that aren't afraid to say what they feel, do what they want as long as they win, they're coming back into play. McMahon's a friend of yours? Yes, he is. You talk frequently? What's it like? He, his biggest concern is to make sure that we don't sub, subsidiary ourselves to, all right, we'll go down here and uh, just say, hey, you know, we're not going to, we'll accept the norm of society. No, nah, that won't work. You know, we're, we're our own people, and uh, we'll change the way uh, people think about us. It may be wrong or right. People may not like us. But they, they'll, they'll adjust. How have they adjusted in, in Norman, Oklahoma? This is a fairly conservative part of the country. You, you know, you look at Norman, Oklahoma, you look at Lincoln, Nebraska, and you look, uh, they look very similar to Russian cities. Uh, <laughs> there's not much there. There's really not much there. But we make the most of it, and we add color. Oklahoma lives Oklahoma football. Uh, we go down there, and... and Especially our team, you know, we have enough freedom on our team that we do and say what we feel as long as we produce on Saturday. Coach Switzer has always been ridiculed about that, but he's the most successful coach in college football. Do you think if you decided to play another year of college ball, just for the sake of argument, with all the buildup you've received, could you be a defensive player who could win the Heisman Trophy? There would be a lot of people have to be taken off the Heisman voting ballot. Um, there's too many of them that are in old school that don't appreciate um, the on the field conduct, the off the field conduct, uh, you know, that's, that's where the, the factors of, of winning the Heisman have come into play. There's a little flaw in there somewhere, and, and the people that get this vote, it's, it's an honor, it's not a privilege. They need to take that in consideration and vote for an athlete, not in personality. Let's get a bottom line here. If before April 13th, which is when you have to declare your intention, if you got a sense that either a trade would be worked out or if it had been worked out so that the Raiders, Jets, or Giants were in position to draft you, you'd go. There's that possibility, yes. But again, I'm, it's a different situation. I, I, it's really hard to, to say what can happen in the NFL draft and the regular draft. The draft is designed to help the weaker teams. The Indianapolis's catch up, the Green Bay's catch up, the Houston's catch up. It's taken them a long time to catch up, and sometimes I don't think uh, some of them ever will. But, you know, we're... The seniors are in a situation, they're stuck in that system. I want to be able to dictate where I go, dictate what I can do, and uh, use the draft to my advantage, not to theirs. Boz, thanks very much. Thank you, Bob. We'll continue in a minute. Halftime at Riverfront, 17 to 3. Cleveland, not what the favored Bengals were expecting, nor was the sold out following of the Cincinnati Bengals here at Riverfront. And now we'll see what the Bengals can do in the second half to get back in this game. Bob Crump, as you assess where they went wrong, where did they go wrong? So much of their offense is tied to Boomer Esaias, and he didn't deliver. Yeah, Don, we got to start there. His numbers are pretty good 10 of 17, but for under 100 yards in, in receiving. He's missed some open receivers, but we have to give an awful lot of credit to the Cleveland defense. They've shut Collinsworth out. He has no catches. Eddie Brown has three for just 28 yards. This is a team that's been averaging somewhere around 450 yards of offense over the last five weeks. The Cleveland defense has done a magnificent job. Bengals get the ball to start the second half. We're going to find out if the Bengals have some leadership at halftime. I think Sam White's best shot was to make Boomer Esiason mad. He's the guy who makes it happen. He's the guy who's got to make it happen. And in his second half, it's got to be up to him. Somebody once said if you wanted to hide from the law, a good place to start would be to be an offensive lineman. But I think this Brown pass blocking has been tremendous. They've kept the guys off of Kosar. There have been a lot of blitzes thrown at him. Of course, he's excellent throwing against the blitz if he has that moment. And they've got to get some pressure on Kosar because he's just been killing them You're on right. the blitz. You're right. And the other extraordinary thing, week in and week out, with Lindy and Fonny's offense, Kosar, when it works, will throw uh, passes to seven or eight receivers. Today, he's got seven receivers on the books already. So they're spreading it around. And they basically have given Cincinnati enough different offensive formations to look at, Don, that they haven't really stopped uh, Cleveland from doing anything. 
So pressure on Kosar, yes, that's certainly a factor. If you're Cleveland, I mean, you got to go in halftime f figuring this is the best half of football we've played in a long time. We got it pretty much in control. We stay with what we're doing. Keep pass protecting Bernie Kosar. Uh, if his hands all right, he'll continue to do what they're uh, doing. That last that drive at the end of the first half, Don, so unbelievably important for Cleveland. They get three points. They stop the Cincinnati Bengals from getting any points on the board. And the Bengals going at halftime. Daubers down. And the Browns going at halftime sky high. They win today. They're the AFC Central Division champs for the second year in a row. Bengals lose today. They kind of join that quagmire of teams around nine and six. Only one turnover. Very few penalties for either team. But the third down conversions. And the big plays by Cleveland, the story in the first half. Cincinnati needs this opening drive now as the Cleveland Browns came out of the blocks like a rocket. First play from scrimmage, a 66 yard throw that set up Kevin Mack's touchdown. That's how it stands. The Browns will win the division with a victory today. The Bengals will go to deep trouble. They'll be chest deep in alligators at 9 and 6 trying to make the playoffs. Interesting too, comparing these two teams in the AFC Central. Cleveland has beaten Pittsburgh twice, Houston twice. Cincinnati is split with Pittsburgh and Houston, and looking to split right here now with Cleveland. We said though at the close of the second quarter, this game has been a masterpiece of coaching and execution. The Browns offensively and defensively really came into this game ready. Not that the Bengals didn't, but the Browns getting up early took Cincinnati out of their game plan. As you see the quarterback numbers in this game. Zayasin, who had a superior game last week against New England with only 99 yards passing in the first half, and they've not hit any big downfield throws to their wide receivers. That's None. the biggest point. The Cleveland Browns have given the receptions to James Brooks. Not gotten the ball down the field against this Cleveland off Cleveland defense. Stanford Jennings and Tim McGee are back for the Bengals to the left. Ready to kick it off now for Cleveland is Mark Mosley. Be tough to handle. Up back gets it. Rodney Holman, a tight end coming down the field, and Big Rodney takes on some people out to the 39. So the Bengals will start with good field position. The crowd gives a big salute to the offense, but that won't last. We've seen Boomer Esiason booed here when his team was ahead 10 nothing. Boomer Esiason is like an electrical storm. He is a real lightning rod. I mean, he's hot or he's cold. He's brilliant or he's average. 10 of 17 for 99 yards. He needs a better half. Eddie Brown, wide receiver to the right. Collinsworth has not caught a ball. The top receiver at the top of your screen. Top receiver for the Bengals. Plenty of time and a catch by Eddie Brown out to the 43 yard line of Cleveland. Boomer living dangerously threads it through a zone defense for an 18 yard gain. Minifield on the coverage. That's Brown's fourth reception. Esiason throws this one very well. Right on the money, just past the outstretched hand. It looked like Eddie Johnson. Minifield is there in coverage. Who's the guy in front? No, I take it back. It's Ray Ellis who is right in front. Eddie Brown, of course, was the ace receiver for Bernie Kosar when they played on that national championship team at Miami of Florida. Eddie Brown somehow catches a poorly thrown ball, but it results in a loss on the play. That looked like a lateral, Don. It's a good thing Brown hung on to the football. If not, that's a free ball from behind the defense. Brown does a great job to catch the ball. If not, Sam Clancy or I take it back, Reggie Camp is bearing down on that. That's going to be a lateral. Cleveland gets the ball, but a loss, second down and 12. Loss of two on the play, and now let's see if Isaiasen gets the ball to Collinsworth. Collinsworth. He's down to the 37 yard line, a gain on the play of eight yards. It'll now bring up third down and about four. Frank Minifield, 31 of the Browns, a man in coverage. And what happens when you run motion is you try to get that defensive back caught in the wash. See if we can pick up 31. He's not in the picture yet. Collinsworth's first catch of the day, and Minifield there to make the tackle.
Two tight ends in the game now. Rodney Holman in, along with rookie Eric Cattis. To the run. Stanley Wilson breaks it for the moment, and he's knocked down at the 32-yard line. If Cleveland was able to shut down the run in the first half, let's see what this play is now. People kicking, I think, after the play. Cleveland was able to shut it down early in the game, and the Bengals got away from the run, but they're a 4.9 per carry team on the average run. Best in the NFL on the average. That time Ray Ellis strong safety hit for Dixon cornerback make makes the tackle Bengals start out on a plus side they convert their first third down Stanley Wilson with 60 yards and 10 carries Brooks James Brooks a fifth year back from Auburn 5'10, 182 pounds twice he's led the NFL in all purpose yardage. New England has now scored and taken the lead back from San Francisco at Foxborough. The Giants and two Joe Morris touchdown runs with a field goal from Allegra now 17 nothing on St. Louis. The Giants might be headed for Pasadena. Green Bay has gone in front of Tampa Bay. Second down and six for the Bengals. They trail 17-3. Rockins almost has it at the 10. A hard thrown ball. Zyason drilling that overhand fastball right at Eric Caddis, the rookie tight end, and it was up for grabs, and Rockins was very close. And the Bengals have attempted to go downfield. Excellent coverage by the Browns defensive backs. And when Zyason has thrown it, there have certainly been a number of Cleveland Brown defenders in the area. Another third down and long situation, Don. Third down and seven. Eddie Brown and Tim McGee. Great speed on the right flank. Allersworth and Kreider, experienced receivers on the left. Now they overload the left side, but go to the run. And the Browns again stuff it. Golick, the nose tackle, just took off the center. Harrison was also on the play along with the Rockins. Several times the Bengals have tried to go with a delay handoff on third and long situations. And that time Rockins dropped the motion coverage. It looked like on Collinsworth. And he was there to make the tackle. And Tim McGee comes in. It looks like the Bengals are going for it on fourth down and eight. Fourth and really about six where they have to get to. But it's still a big gamble and they have to make it early as the game is in the second half. 11.40 to play in the third quarter. Cleveland 17, the favored Bengals three. Zyason might be sprinting out. Roll to the left. Oh! Under throws Eddie Brown, who's made some superior catches today, but it was a poorly thrown ball. That wasn't Brown's ball. You're absolutely correct. He threw it too easy, and the thing kind of dropped a little bit. And Eddie Brown couldn't make the catch. He doesn't set his feet, just nonchalantly throws it out there, and he knows. So the Bengals fire another empty shot, an empty blank in the battle. And of they received a better offer. How much? A hundred thousand. A mm -hmm. hundred thousand? You're kidding. And they want a response by noon. This meeting is taking place in different cities around the country. What makes it possible is AT&T Alliance Teleconferencing Service. What's incredible is it sounds like it's taking place in the same room. It's too risky. Let's be smart. Raise it by 20, but no higher. I agree. Set up your own phone meeting with a touchtone phone. 0700-456-1000. Good night, folks. Their shapes have been restyled. Their controls redesigned. But there's one thing about Mustang that will never change. The sheer thrill of driving one. The new Mustang convertible. LX and GT. What they have in common is anything but. This is Mustang. Have you driven a Ford lately? Mm. Welcome to the Silver Bullet, home of a cold Coors Light. Rob, do you work out? Yeah, I belong to a club. Here's your Coors Light. Yeah, I'm thinking about joining a club, but can't seem to find a good enough reason. 
I mean, is a flat stomach a good enough reason? Nope. Building up my endurance? Nope. <laughs> Big muscles? No. See the club, Rob? Yeah. <laughs> oh! What's the name of that club? There's no slowing down Rob? with a silver Rob. bullet tonight. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Stroh's and Stroh Life. Now you're talking good times and Stroh's is spoken here. And by Olympus, makers of 35 millimeter cameras, including the new OM77 AF. Ready to go. There's been no Tiger in the Bengals offensive tank today. As right now, Kosar takes over. Downfield to Ozzy Newsom, who's across midfield to the 47-yard line of Cincinnati. Perfectly thrown again. 25-yard pickup to Ozzy Newsom. The coverage was there, but Kosar puts it right on the money. Be able to see it unfold right in front of us. Emmanuel King, 90, is right there. Look at that. Absolutely on the money. Kozar is hot. Bernie Kozar has now put the ball in the air 26 times in this game. Has completed 12 for 223 yards and a touchdown. Kevin Matt. The success trump of the Cleveland Browns this year is all the more remarkable when you consider that Mack was a thousand yard rusher last year and is way down in production this year and Biner was an eleven hundred yard rusher. He's missed almost the whole season. The running game has been non-existent a lot of weeks and yet they win week after week. That's why you can't give enough credit to Marty Schottenheimer and his staff. They've changed from a physical football team to a finesse football team and are ten and four doing it. In the past week Biner had a pin removed from his ankle. He was operated on earlier in the season. He will be back for the playoffs and the Browns will be in the playoffs. Another blitz. A little underthrown for Kevin Mack. And again, Kosar, he back pedals, lets those blitzers come on him, come on him almost like he's throwing a screen, and then he lobs it over the defense. Carl Zander, 91, very close. There's a production of Mack and Biner in 85. The most important factor, the 15 touchdowns in 86. Just nine, although Mack scored today. So I think it's 10 for the two, and they've only played seven quarters together. That's how remarkable Kosar has been. Just handled this offense from the first play to the last. Recently 23 years old and just his second year in the league. The million dollars a year Art Modell spent to get him might have been cheap. Throwing a drop ball. Ryan Brennan, normally short hand, was looking back into the sun, it appeared, and lost the ball. You know the sight lines in the stadium. About this time, that's very tough, but Bobby Kemp was almost there to make the interception. The Bengals have not had a turnover today. The Browns got one. Very few penalties. It has been execution by the Browns. There's Tim McGee. Nobody breaks big plays against the Cleveland special teams. We'll see if McGee can do it. Bengals have to make something happen. Browns pride themselves in their excellent special teams. Another good punt. But it's going to carry in for a touchback. And so the Bengals, again, if they're going to get there, have to go the long field. They'll start first and 10 at their 20. Watch Brennan on his slant, Don. He's looking right back in the sun. The ball thrown, and he doesn't expect it. Still able to get his hand on it, but an incomplete pass. When we come back, the Bengals will have the ball for the second time in the second half. There's another kind of Ford Tempo, specializing in sheer exuberance. Ford Tempo Sport GL. Its high output engine and road handling suspension tell you it wants to be driven. Ford Tempo Sport GL. Think of it as fun in a distinctively different form. Ford Tempo Sport GL. Fire brewing. It's more than a way to make Stroh's and Stroh light. It's a family tradition. 
passed down from one generation to another for over 200 years. It's what guarantees that smooth, consistent taste for generations to come. Now you're talking straws. Now you're talking beer. Now you're talking good times. And straws is spoken here. He lives in genius. You got the money, honey. I've got the time. Gotta be comfortable. Gotta last. Gotta be Wrangler. If you got the money, honey, I've got the time. A legend in jeans. Wrangler. Friday Night Videos takes the field in the starting lineup, Ron Darling. Plus, Bruce Springsteen, Van Halen, and Robin Williams. Friday Night Videos managed by Bob Costas and Ahmad Rashad. Bruce Hyacin, his head bowed, tells the sad story of the Cincinnati offense today. There's been no boom in that offense. It's been top gun right now as Hyacin will try again. Starting from his 20, trailing in the game are the Bengals 17 to 3 to the underdog Browns. Downfield throw, and it's incomplete. And Hyacin did very well to get rid of it. I don't know what the play was, but it wasn't like they drew it up. Sam Clancy was the man right at his feet. We have a Bengal down on the field, too. It's the center, Dave Remington. There's Clay Matthews right there. Boomer avoids the sack and tries to get the ball off. Clancy finally with the contact. And we're going to try to roll out far side, Don, and Clay Matthews destroyed that with that outside linebacker blitz. That's worked all day. Banks and Matthews put a lot of pressure on Esiason. Bengals have only 125 yards passing. Esiason, 13 for 22. And no interceptions in the game. Well, and a catch to Rodney Holman, but a penalty marker down. If the play goes, it'll be a first down, but the marker's back in the Bengal backfield. Might be a holding prop. I think they got Dave Remington. Yes, it's holding Cincinnati. I think it's Remington on Bob Goley, the nose backer, at his request, the nose backer for the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Plays a little bit off the line, so he calls himself a holding number 63 offense, 10 yards, held the face mask. It's Joe Walter, the offensive tackle. That'd be on the right side. There's the, there's the, that's on camp. Joe Walter gets his hand up into the face of camp, flag down, and a first down negated. The Browns win this game, go home next week and beat San Diego as they'll be favored to do. It's not going to be a good deal to have to go into Cleveland to play the Browns in a playoff game. Ziasen downfield, too much on it for a wide open Eddie Brown as Ziasen misses another open receiver and he doesn't have the answers either. He's had some fabulous games this season and through his three years in the NFL. Today, Boomers come up empty. It's the mechanics. The thing that Sam White just preached to Boomer. Boomer didn't want to be taught the mechanics. Leave me alone. Let me play. Now this is the alternate receiver that Boomer goes to. Carries the ball well, but when he slaps that thing, doesn't look bad throwing it, but another incompletion. This is a hope coming up right now. This throw, it's third down and 20. Downfield, and it's intercepted. Coming up with the ball for the Cleveland Browns was Felix Wright. And so the Browns stop the Bengals again, and this time Cleveland takes over on the turnover inside the Cincinnati 35-yard line. On the Cleveland Browns have done an extraordinary job of taking away the wide receivers. Look at Wright. First foot down, second foot down. He makes the interception. There's two guys there in coverage. It was Dixon short, I believe. 31 short. Felix Wright deep. And Wright makes the interception. There'll be some whooping and hollering down in the flats of Cleveland tonight. A city with something to be excited about over this football team. Right now, let's see what Coast and the Browns go to to the run. Kevin Mack breaks it. A dispirited Cincinnati defense now gives up the big gainer down to the 16-yard line. 
Robert Jackson finally on the tackle. That's an 18 yard pickup by Kevin Mack. Look at the offensive line. Look at the push they get. 63 rising an excellent job. Jackson chases him down the field all day long. Cleveland with their different formations in motion have put the Bengals in a spot where they've never really been comfortable against this offense. And the Browns continue Trump to average nine yards per first down in this game. A dominant statistic. 17 to 3 Cleveland. They're looking for more. Third quarter. Matt, bad shoulder and all, gets down to the 12. Jim Scow and Emmanuel King were on the stop for Cincinnati. Mack has been a real force for this football team since he's come back. Even with the bad shoulder, the 68 yards rushing he has today keeps that Cleveland Brown offense honest. The Bengals can't think pass because they'll give it to Kevin Mack. They can't think run because they'll throw it deep. Oh, Bernie might be going right to the end zone here. Brennan to the left, to the right. Slaughter to the left. Now they're going back to Kevin Mack. He breaks it down to the six-yard line. He's going to be very close to a first down for Cleveland. Ran right through the tackle of Carl Zander. Eventually, from Ryan Horton make the tackle, but you see him floating back there behind the offensive line of scrimmage. And then when he feels that spot, a little gap in the defense open, he accelerates up through it. Dave Redding, the strength coach for the Cleveland Browns, brought some palm trees, some fake palm trees into the locker room the past week. They asked him what that was all about. He said, just to remind the boys about Pasadena, there's palm trees out there. Hey, look, the Cleveland Browns have all the trappings of a playoff team. One, they've got their own video. Every team in the playoffs or Super Bowl contender must have its own video. Conan the Barbarian. Not Barbarian, it was named after Mike Babb. Center. He plays Coney and the Barbarian. Look at Indianapolis. Uh oh. Who needs Vinny Testaverde, say the Colts? We're going for it. First and goal, Cleveland. Browns can probably nail the lid on if they take it in here. Mack down to the one yard line. Second and goal from there. Look at this offensive line of the Browns. The left side is Farron, Williams, and Babb. Yeah, he's, go he's a good five yards down the field before anybody makes contact with Kevin Mack. They're steamrolling now. Mack has 79 of Cleveland's 82 yards rushing for the day. Four straight times. Probably this one will be the fifth. He's the eye back, the second back. That's the man. Down close. No signal is in as the line's been run in. They'll spot the ball inside of a foot from the goal line. See Ricky Bolden in there, 77. Look at that cast on his left arm. Big offensive tackle. Broke his arm and has come, in, has come back. This is the first game he's been activated. There it is. Protection for his arm. When he's healthy, uh, he's, a, he's reporting to the official that it's, he's, he has an ineligible number and he's playing an eligible spot. I don't think you can consider him a receiver with that monster cast on, though. The signal, it's a touchdown for Cleveland. Oh, there's a lot of Browns fans here. We might have some skirmishes in the stands before long. Mac is 19th carry. He has two touchdowns on a day. On the day again, a good surge by the offensive line. Pazuli, 72, leads up, and on the second effort, all you have to do is break the plane of the goal line. Mack in for the second time today. 
Six plays, 34 yards. Kevin Mack on every play, and finally on the payoff end with his second touchdown of the day. And the Cleveland Browns move a step and a touchdown closer to the AFC Central Championship as they go in front 24 to 3. Mack with the Browns kickoff after this. Up above Monaco, here on the Grand Corniche, you can tell that Ford's new Thunderbird Turbo Coupe is newly engineered. An intercooled turbo gives you extra power. A computer-controlled suspension improves ride and handling. Anti-lock braking gives you surer stops. Thunderbird Turbo Coupe is the only car in the world to make all this sophisticated engineering standard. Have you driven a Ford lately? At Braun, we believe simple is better than complicated. Order is better than confusion. Quiet is better than loud. Only through superior design can one achieve superior performance. It is this philosophy that has helped make Braun the number one selling foil shaver in the world. What's also helped is that no other shaver gives you a closer shave. Braun, now available in America. So the issue is clear. Sony Video 8, the system of the future, or VHSC, the compromise of the past. Now, as we've seen, the new Sony Handycam with autofocus and zoom gives you a measurably better picture, far superior sound, twice the recording time, and on Sony video cassettes, your memories are safe. While on VHSC, they could be fleeting. I rest my case. The Sony Video 8 system. Judge for yourself. The best and brightest of the bowls are on NBC as Heisman Trophy winner Benny Testaverde leads the number one Miami Hurricanes against Joe Paterno's second-ranked Nittany Lions of Penn State. A battle of undefeateds for the national championship at the Fiesta Bowl. January 2nd, college football's best and brightest are on NBC. Trump being a Cincinnatian, what's this Who Day business here? 81, everyone was cheering Who Day, Who Day. And who they are, the Cleveland Browns, today. Jim McGee, a native Clevelander, getting a rude welcome from the Browns from his hometown. McGee, a high school All-American at John Hay High School in Cleveland. Then on to Tennessee. And a gentleman named D.D. Hoggard came down. Got him good. All Kevin Mack on that scoring drive. All Kevin Mack. Now the Bengals are forced to almost go with their quick huddle offense for the remainder of the game. There's 5.08 to go in the third. They got to try to compress as many plays as they possibly can in the next 20 minutes of offensive football. James Brooks comes up the middle for not very much and calling the run when you're way down is not well received by the Bengal following he's now though James Brooks over a thousand yards rushing for the year Brown's very comfortable on their sideline and well they should be as the Bengals go with the no huddle offense small solace downfield throw oh. Allensworth was tripped but they say it was in coverage not intentional day long Frank Minifield has done an outstanding job on Chris Collinsworth you see Minifield short underneath it's Rockins Looked like he tripped over his own foot Frank Minifield was so excited about today's game he forgot to call his mother yesterday on her birthday it is excuse me it's Hanford Dixon I apologize and Hanford Dixon's mother had a birthday yesterday Marva down in Mississippi mommy sorry didn't call you but happy birthday Jim McNally, the Bengals line coach, offensive line coach, was 43 yesterday. Not what he was looking for in a way of celebration. Here is a throw in the flat. Out to the 21-yard line. McGee can't handle the ball. And fourth down arises, and the Bengals bring on their punt team again. That's another three down and out for the Bengals. Don, you hope your great players have great games in, in big games. And unfortunately... Boomer's not really played up to par today. Playing a football game up there in Foxborough as now the 49ers have come from behind to take a 19-17 lead. Giants extend their lead to 20 to nothing. 
They win their last two games today and next week against Green Bay. The Giants will have the home field the rest of the way, no matter what the Bears do. Here's a pass downfield. Run back by Felix Wright. It's going to go in. There's a penalty marker down also. Don, it's interference against Cleveland. Chris Rockins had Stanford Jennings in coverage and pushed him down. The Bengals are going to get the ball back. That play, though, looked like something the Bad News Bears threw up. Two fouls on a play, ineligible downfield, number 55, offense, interference, number 37, defense, replay. The Bengals thought they had nothing but interference. This is not pretty. You can see they they almost, Minifield almost blocks it, but you can see the interference. Rockins right there, 37 on 36, intercepted by Felix Wright. But it's no place, and so now they got a punt for real. Watch Minifield come from the right. He almost blocks that punt if it were a punt. So the shining moment of Felix Wright is taken away from him. They'll try to punt again. This time I think they'll kick it. Jeff Hayes, his numbers depict uh, pretty much how it's gone for the Bengals all day long in every aspect. Down 24 to 3. career day that was 18 yards Best punt and pickers can get it farther than that back after this my new Olympus is the only autofocus SLR with a built-in flash like this in case I want to shoot like this the new Olympus OM 77 AF the only autofocus SLR that does it all the Florida Everglades and old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. The Everglades means airboating, as close as you can get to flying without leaving the ground. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp old Milwaukee beer and smooth, golden old Milwaukee life. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place in old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee life. Hey, guys, it doesn't get any better than this. This is the new Ford Mustang GT. With its unmistakably new body surrounding an equally dramatic 5-liter port fuel injected engine, it's easy to pick out the Mustang GT from a crowd. Not that it's likely to be in one. This is the new Mustang GT. Have you driven a Ford lately? This high-performance drink cleans your fuel system to help maintain peak performance. STP Gas Treatment, the high-performance drink for your car. Next Sunday, the NFL plays here when the Jets battle the Bengals. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL 86. Big Dave Remington, who anchors the offensive line of Cincinnati, the 300-pounder from Nebraska. He got all the honors as the best lineman of the year when he came out. Number one draft choice of the Bengals, but today, the Bengal offense has fired blanks, unable to get the big play. Cleveland, its defense totally in concert and sync all over the field, stopping the pass, shutting down the run, and leading the game 24-3 over the favored Bengals. They're going deep here, Don. First, they go to uh, carry by Kevin Mack down to the 33-yard line. I thought they were going deep. They'll have that chance now. Not been a glorious day for the Bengals today in Riverfront Stadium. There's Hanford Dixon. Happy birthday, Mom. It's a day late. He's sorry he didn't call you yesterday, but this is a nice birthday present for Mrs. Dixon. He'll call you tonight. Second and eight for the Cleveland Browns. 
Kevin Mack works his way down to the 31 yard line. Looked like he was going to pass that one. There's Collinsworth, number 80. In the foreground, James Brooks. This is the opportunity that Cincinnati wanted, and they've not responded. Cleveland Browns have taken him flat out of the football game. Bengals in position if they'd won today to win again next week and have not only a playoff spot but a divisional championship. The Browns are going to nail the lid on today. They'll win the AFC Central for a second straight year. A year ago they did it, you'll remember, with an 8-8 eight eight record. Then played a great game at Miami only to lose at the end. Long ball. Another catch on the run. Out of bounds at the eight-yard line is Langhorn. Or is that Fontenot? Herman Fontenot comes out of the backfield and gets it. 23 yards on the catch. Again, Kozar laser accurate. He's flushed from the pocket and on the run. Watch where he puts this one. Absolutely on the money. Couldn't take it down there and hand it to him any better. Hard to tell if that second foot came down in bounds or not. Right at the line. Mott knows two catches for 32 yards. Oh, they have owned the Bengals today. Any way you look at it. Instant replay is looking again to see if that second foot came down in bounds. If his foot did not come down in bounds, the only miscue the Browns have had all day. They have played a perfect game offensively and defensively. Well, the official right there is spotted a catch and replay marked it at the eight. Is reviewing the play. Barney Bussey, 27 in coverage, first foot down, second foot, hard to tell. That's inconclusive. I think the play will stand. Give it to him. They've done everything else right. You don't want to get too carried away and talk about a perfect football game, but the Browns have been close. And I don't know if they can play much better than this. Offensively and defensively, their special teams have not allowed the big return. They've not made the mistake. After review by the instant replay official, the play stands as called. Completed pass. First and goal for Cleveland. Kevin Mack, both arms on the ball. Browns haven't had an interception. They've not fumbled the ball away. You remember that Mack had a fumble early in the game, but the Cleveland Browns recovered, and then Mack went in for the first touchdown. Giants extending their lead to 20 to nothing now. Dallas comes back to lead Philadelphia. Big story developing possibly at Indianapolis if the Colts win. Tampa Bay with another loss next week, which they're eminently capable of. <laughs> we'll have Bernie Kosar filling our Vinny Testaverde, successor to Bernie Kosar, filling their stadium. Kevin Mack injured ever so slightly. He may be just tired going off the field. Curtis Dickey comes in as the running back. Mack has been busy in his second half. He's run on nine of the last ten Browns offensive plays. He's earned his keep today. and go Cleveland the Browns in the lead 24 to 3. But Cleveland does maintain possession. Webster Slaughter gets it. That's basically the way the ball has bounced for the Browns today. Only guy can recover it is Kevin now Curtis Dickey because he fumbled it. Remember that famous Raider play where they knocked it downfield against San Diego into the end zone. And oh, wait a minute. They're calling this a touchdown. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They're calling this a touchdown. What the. I think what it is is in the final two minutes that's when that rule is in existence. That's right. Okay. 
Flag down. Bengals asking for clarification. We're confused. I guarantee you. So I'm glad they are too. Game clock stopped with a minute six seconds left to play in the third quarter as coach Marty Schottenheimer waiting to see if he gets another touchdown and Sam White hoping the deluge will stop. Offside, defense, point is good, five yards on the kickoff. But if it's not within the last two minutes of a half or a game, a teammate can recover the fumble. So Webster Slaughter will we, will be credited with a touchdown on the fumble recovery. That interpretation from uh, Nick Scorich, a former head coach of the Cleveland Browns, who's now here with the National Football League, running the replay. Nick knows all the rules. I'll guarantee you that. That's the way the day has gone for Cleveland. They've earned it. Every single time the ball is bounced, it's bounced their way. Webster Slaughter, he's just there to make a block. Ball pops loose. I'll take six points. The Browns have had three fumbles today, not lost a one. Congratulations to the Cleveland Browns. With 106 to go in the third quarter, they are in firm control. Although I think they pretty much took the Bengals out of the game at the end of the first half when they stopped that drive. That's when the Bengals had their last real chance to get back in the game. Webster Slaughter's having a heck of a day. He's been on the board with two touchdowns today on the receiving end of a 46 yard pass play and now recovering a teammate's fumble. Here's the kickoff downfield. It goes out of bounds inside the five with a minute to play in the half in the third quarter. Off out of so the Browns will kick it over. This, this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Bengals and the National Football League is prohibited. Marty Schottenheimer is going to get a ride off this field. I don't think he's going to have to walk. The Browns throughout this season seven of their ten wins have been by four points or less or oh, they have made up for past close games and been accused of winning ugly today they win they're, they're winning beautifully they really are a near perfect game for Cleveland be sure to stay tuned for the second half of today's NBC doubleheader most of you will see the Dolphins and the Rams in an interconference battle be sure to check your local listings for the game in your area. Doubleheader day as they start down the stretch run of the season. The Cleveland Browns about to win the AFC Central Division Championship for a second straight year. They came in as an underdog. They'd not beaten the Cincinnati Bengals in their last four trips to Queen City. But today they've dominated throughout. Got on the board first. First after the opening kickoff. And here's another big hit by Cleveland special teams as Stanford Jennings is stuffed at his 14 yard line. Really, I think, Trump, the game was illustrated the way it would go on the first play from scrimmage when Bernie Kosar lofted a 66-yard pass play downfield to Langhorn, and shortly thereafter, Mack was in the end zone, and that was really the ball game. Bowl games coming up. The 87 bowl game. Kicking off with the Rose Bowl at 4.30 Eastern time. Then the Orange Bowl, where powerful Oklahoma will be going against the Razorbacks of Arkansas then the national championship game on Tuesday January 2nd Miami of Florida and Penn State Chip Banks was there first number 56 they have been all over this Cincinnati Bengal offense. did that time Banks has not always play up to his great potential even when he comes close to it he's about as good as there is and just an unbelievable talent 6'4 235 
And he's been playing big games of late as the Cleveland Browns drive on down the stretch, ready to win their fourth game in a row. The Browns had not had four straight wins since their 80 playoff year. The game that ended in the ice bowl and heartbreak at Cleveland Stadium. Browns ready to kick a field goal to beat the Raiders. Tried one more pass, and Mike Davis made a diving interception of Brian Seif. The Raiders went on, subsequently won the Super Bowl, blasting Philadelphia Eagles. Downfield, intercepted ball at the 40. Running it back is Hanford Dixon, and he's not done until he's down to the 20 yard line. Asiasen's down. I think his feelings are hurt more than anything else. The ball was intended for Collinsworth, thrown way behind him. And Dixon was right there on the catch. You can see that he's got time here to throw, but he gets a little antsy. He's also got Reggie Camp right on his chest. Hey, you get there. And Boomer is afraid to even look. Happy birthday, Mom. Personal foul, twist and twist of the face mask by number 24 on the offensive team after the interception. 15-yard penalty, then it will be first and 10 after the change of quarter. Three quarters of the way home. It is still a 31 to 3 game. The Browns, and we'll be back after these messages. Tonight, Eddie Murphy's the crook. Nick Nolte's the cop. They shook up Beverly Hills. Now they're tearing up San Francisco in the outrageous 48 hours tonight. Hmm, sure hope it starts. On typical Ohio winter mornings, you'll be glad you filled up at Ohio. Ice is kind of thick today. Because Ohio unleaded gasolines and diesel supreme with Ice Guard are guaranteed to prevent fuel line freeze up. Well, here goes. It's Ohio with Ice Guard. You go, or we pay the toll. Morning, Frank. A stranger comes by the ranch and steals my wife. I got a bit riled. What's worse, he takes her off on my horse. Then he says, My smoke. This mild little cigar called Backwoods was the dirt ugliest thing he ever saw. That did it. Nobody calls my cigar ugly. <laughs> Nobody. Your dog's ugly, too. All natural Backwoods. Anything this ugly has to be good. This is a beer that's everything a fine imported beer ought to be. It's brewed with all natural ingredients, the way fine imported beers are brewed. Bottled in tall green glass, the way fine imported beers are bottled. This is Rolling Rock, Rolling Rock Premium Beer, brewed by the Latrobe Brewing Company and imported in bottles and cans from Latrobe, PA. Lovely Cheryl Lab, Monday on Entertainment Tonight. The penalty ends up being on Ray Ellis after the interception. You'll see Ray Ellis hits Stanley Wilson in the back. And then at the very end, he grabs the face mask. So it's a 15-yard penalty against Cleveland. It still ends up being first and 10 out after the Bengals' third turnover of the day. Boomer Sison's second interception. And a receiver was not even close. Right back to Kevin Mack. Now a possession runner for the Cleveland Browns as we start the fourth quarter. And Mack takes it down to the Cincinnati 30. But the Bengals were beaten in this one long ago, down 31 to 3. And can Cleveland continues to dominate the game. 23 carries by Mack, the most by a running back so far this season. You see he's holding that left arm very gingerly. I don't think Marty Schottenheimer wants to mess him up for the playoffs. I think we're going to see a lot of Curtis Dickey for the remainder of the game. Browns have a very big one again next week. They don't want to go in as a wild card. Well, that, they win the division today. They get their week off. 
They, they want to get the home field by winning next week. It becomes very important when they close out the regular season at Cleveland Stadium against San Diego. World of difference between 11 and 5 and 12 and 4. 49ers extend their lead. They have to win today to the 49ers, and they're doing it over New England. Cardinals finally got on the board. Dallas holding to a one-point lead over the Eagles in the fourth quarter. Indianapolis now leading Buffalo. Jim Kelly, the Bills quarterback, was knocked out of that game. We don't know if he's back. That is some story. A new coach. And we're already calling Indy Vindy. I know. Kosar takes a timeout. Didn't like what he saw defensively. Eddie Johnson, ready for the party tonight. We'll be back right after this. The time right now. The place, your Mazda dealers. The event, Goodbye 86. We're saying goodbye with goodbyes on all our 87s, 323s, 626s, even our X7s. And right now, special factory cash incentives can save you hundreds on 87 B2000 trucks. Buy now, while sales tax is still deductible. But hurry, the end is almost here. Visit your Mazda dealer for a good buy now. Don't let time run out. Nothing escapes the eye of Maxim. The world's first SLR with built-in autofocus, Minolta Maxim focuses by itself. Sharp, fast. Only the human eye focuses faster. With Minolta Maxim, you even get unexpected shots that would have gotten away. The incredible Maxim system. Only from the mind of Minolta. Just a little north of Boston, in the old town of Marblehead, is a place where only local people used to eat. But the scallopini and the scampi were so good that word soon got out that a night in Rosalie's was like a night in Milan. But if you go there, remember, bring a big appetite and bring your visa card. Because at Rosalie's, they don't take no for an answer and they don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. is brought to you by Mazda. The more you look, the more you like Mazda value. By Budweiser, Beechwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by Visa, accepted worldwide for shopping, dining, and travel. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Bengals with not much to dance about today at Cincinnati with the Cleveland Browns with the lead and the football 31 to 3 lead for the Browns who came in as an underdog. No weaving down to the 26 yard line. This was a year for the Browns to break some jinxes. This certainly a short one not having one here since 81. But they were 0 for 3 River Stadium before they beat the Steelers at Pittsburgh this year, 0 for 16. Art Modell traveled this morning, too. That's a lucky streak for him. Goes to traveling with the team. He comes in the day of the game. Now look at his field position for the Browns. In the last three dive drives, they started at the Bengals 34, the Bengals 35, and the Bengals 36. There's Art Modell. Congratulations, Art. Congratulations to Art and the Browns organization on their second straight AFC Central Championship. There are 13 minutes from making it official, but the scoreboard made it official some time ago. It's 31 to 3 Cleveland. Curtis Dickey to the 21. Schottenheimer's called off the dogs. He's just sending the ball straight at the Cincinnati defense, and they still could get in again, Cleveland. That's not slowing down the Browns. There's the other side, Paul Brown, formerly the head coach of the Cleveland Browns, formerly the head coach of the Bengals. Browns have 108 yards rushing today, and they are 7 and 0 this season, or will be when they've gained 100 or more yards rushing as a team, not just one back. Credit here goes to the defense, though. The Browns' defense has been outstanding. Yesterday at our meeting, Kevin Byrne, the vice president of public relations for the Cleveland Browns, mentioned that Marty Schottenheimer 
was a tuba player at Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania High School at one time. Bob Trumpy says, I hope we don't get that in tomorrow. But say, we're going Don, to, we just got it in. Say, Don, did you know that when Marty Schottenheimer was in high school in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania, he played the tuba? He also played some linebacker, went on to be an All-American at the University of Pittsburgh. Formation. Bernie Kosar knows what's supposed to go on out there. What's the he's, matter with these guys? He's telling Harry Holt, you lined up wrong, son. We're not going to run the play with you on the wrong side. What's wrong with that, Kosar? The time right now. The event, Goodbye 86. The offer, Mazda's SE5 plus 5. It's the 69.95 SE5 plus $650 worth of extras at no extra charge from Mazda. You get a bed liner, mud guard, sliding rear window, floor mats, even an AM FM stereo. A $650 value at no extra charge. See your Mazda dealer for an SE5 plus 5 now. But hurry, the end is almost here. Don't let time run out. Let's talk your policy, dig up your bill. Leave it to the good hands, people. Come into Allstate and compare our low homeowners rates. You might just save some money. Check through your files. Look how you low. Get down to Allstate. You might save some dough. Leave it to the good hands, people. You're in good hands with Allstate. A member of the Sears Financial Network. You begin with raw steel. Shape it with fire muscle and sweat. Polish it to razor sharp perfection. We're looking for a few good men with a medal to be Marines. Saturday, the NFL plays here when the Broncos battle the Seahawks. Before your team takes the field, our team hits the air. NFL 86. The route continues. The Cleveland Browns, the underdog, putting away Cincinnati. Trump, I don't think the Bengals have had this much fun since their last root canal. Yeah. Don, did I tell you that when uh, Marty Schottenheimer was in high school, he played the tuba? And right now, he's going to be blowing it on the plane on the way home as they go to the run. And look at Curtis Dickey take people out inside the 10. We still have 11.20 to go. Gonna be a lot of letter winners after this game. Everybody's going to play. What a turnaround for the Bengals last week. 584 yards in the last five games. They'd averaged 450 yards of offense, but the Cleveland offense with time on the field and the Cleveland defense kept the Bengals to 215 total yards to this point in the game. I'm just doing a couple of mathematical equations in my head here, and I'm quite certain if the Browns win again next week. They'll be on the home field for the playoffs. And you want to go in there with 80,000 Clevelanders whooping and hollering. Minus 60 degrees wind chill factor. Just on, like the Browns like it. On the shore of Lake Erie. That lake nice and frozen over. You can walk all the way to Buffalo on playoff day. Don, that's if they win next week, that's home playoff for all games except the one in Pasadena. Is that right? They'll be on the home field. They win next week. They'll be on the home field throughout all of the playoffs. Right now, the Browns looking for more as they have the ball. And off goes to Curtis Dickey. Both arms on it. He's down to the five yard line. This was a fight. They'd stop it on a TKO. Couldn't agree with you more. Our producer today is Larry Cirillo, who will be producing that AFC championship game in Cleveland if the Browns get there. And they'll be probably favored to certainly to advance from the first round. 
Our director today, John Gonzalez. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman. The coordinating producer of NFL football is Ted Nathanson. As the Cleveland Browns in their best showing of this season. En route to an 11th victory in a second straight AFC Central Division Championship. Curtis Dickey just powering his way up the middle. Coach Schattenheimer well aware that his team will be playing the Bengals twice next year and for years to come. I think they've already rubbed it in at 31 to 3. I mean they haven't done it intentionally but I'm not sure what all of the people in the stadium are doing staying here. Let's just assume they're all Cleveland Brown fans. Well, they got Mosley out. Keep him in game form. 20 yard field goal attempt. Wraps it up like an extra point. And the beating goes on. 34 to 3, Cleveland. We'll be back with yet another Browns kickoff in a moment. The time right now. The place, your Mazda dealers. The event, Goodbye 86. We're saying goodbye with goodbyes on all our 87s, 323s, 626s, even our X7s. And right now, special factory cash incentives can save you hundreds on 87 B2000 trucks. Buy now, while sales tax is still deductible. But hurry, the end is almost here. Visit your Mazda dealer for a good buy now. Don't let time run out. In the tradition of Christmas past, Zales brings you the Christmas present. Gifts with style. Fabulous quarter carat fashion rings, just $3.49. Or choose from half carrot styles for just $5.99. Or dazzling one carrot styles, $9.99. Zales Christmas presents. Buy now and pay nothing until April of 87 at Zales. This is the time of year when we gather from far and near. And we welcome the season in and let all the love begin. And the jokes you tell and the songs you sing And the sight of your smile still means everything And I finally get to say Hi, I Mama. think of you every day <laughs> Happy holidays, Coors to you From the people at Coors Thank you, New England Patriots Thank you, Chicago Bears Thank you, Louisville Cardinals Thank you, Oklahoma Sooners Thank you, Boston Red Sox Thank you, New York Mets. And thank you for watching NBC Sports this year. Shortly, those of you in Miami, Kansas City, and Seattle will be leaving us to watch the game involving your team. We'll keep you informed on this game throughout the rest of the afternoon on NFL 86. This game now 8 minutes and 28 seconds from being history as another kickoff goes downfield. And for Jennings, we'll bring it back for the Bengals. Too little and all too late for Cincinnati. 34 to 3 Cleveland. Who'd have thunk it, Bob Trumpy? Nobody here in Cincinnati, would they? Well, I think most people in Cleveland and in Cincinnati felt this would be a pretty close game. But when Cleveland came out and that first play, the 66 yarder to Langhorn, pretty obvious that Cleveland was. Up to it, even on the road. They now go to six and two on the road. Best record in the NFL on the road. Out it goes, and here's James Brooks in open field, giving it everything he's got, playing with all his might in this lost cause as he gets the ball out for a Cincinnati first down. 13 yard gain on the play. Carl Harrison on the tackle, but the Browns are going to allow a lot of yards. They're thinking of the champagne and the celebration and the flight back to Cleveland. End up to Brooks up the middle of the field and James Brooks on a first down carry gets to the 40. This game started out with a couple of bangs. First play from scrimmage Kosar to Langhorn 66 yards down to the Cleveland down to the Cincinnati two three plays later. Kevin Mack was in for the first score and it proved to be the winning score as it turns out now. 
First possession for the Bengals. They moved down the field, kicked the field goal, and that was very nearly another Cleveland touchdown because Hanford Dixon had open track to the end zone if he intercepted. Bengals came into the ball game. Bengals came into the ball game averaging close to 150 yards rushing a game last week against New England. They had 300 today, 103. When they assemble and start looking at the videotape, as you can see, the frustration of the Bengals offensively in their last four possessions. It was the defense of the Cleveland Browns that just took away what the Bengals had done so very successfully the previous five weeks. Allensworth can't get to the ball overthrown. Felix Wright gave him some help getting out of bounds. Sison down. I think one of the biggest stories of this day is what yeah there's Chip Banks who's been doing some hitting today is what's happening in Indianapolis the Colts who if they lost their last two games would get the number one pick in the draft Ron Myers said we're going to play as hard as we can and win both they won last week at Atlanta they're beating Buffalo 17 to 14 in the fourth quarter and if Tampa Bay loses to St. Louis next week. Tampa Bay would have the number one pick in the draft by virtue of an easier schedule if they finish with the same record as the Colts. Another less than spectacular punt. There's Ernest Biner. It's a 26 yard punt by Jeff Hayes. Congratulations. Yes, sir. He knows it's all about. Hi, Cleveland. How you feel? Hi, Cleveland. Really good. Look, he's got his own Bernie blaster down there. Getting ready? No, no. The pin is out. Ernest is ready to start running again. The Giants, as they call them in New York, might be the best team in the league right now. Defensively, I believe you are correct. Indianapolis now by 10 over Buffalo. A lot of the office pool pickers taking a beating that one along with the Bills. They were all, everybody thought the Colts would lose their last two, but Meyer was right. He said, we're going to play like hard as we can and win them both. Now that's good for this season. What about for the next 10 years? That's right. It doesn't really placate your fans, does it? Finishing 3 and 13. They may sell more tickets, though, by finishing. 2 and 14 and getting Testa Verde than finishing 3 and 13 and not getting it. Curtis Dickey as the Browns run the ball, waiting for the clock to run out. It's down to 6-10 to play in running. Cleveland Browns open with a 14-3 lead at the end of the first quarter. They led 17-3 Cleveland at the half. 14 more in the third quarter to extend the lead. Three more in the fourth. As it's a 34 to 3 game. And strength coach Redding, East Level had those palm trees, a few more of those back in that Cleveland locker room this yeah, week. They're fake, but this certainly watered them. Ernest <laughs> Sticky on third down doesn't get there, and he's to the 35 yard line. And I notice that Ken Anderson is warming up on the sideline. They call him rookie in his 16th year in the league. What a player he's been over the years. Well, I'll tell you what, if they score 28 points in seven minutes, we'll change his name from rookie to Houdini. <laughs> well, they say an optimist is an 85-year-old man who marries a 21-year-old woman, then buys a five-bedroom house near an elementary school. So they said they introduced Al Testaverde, Vinny Testaverde's father, at the Heisman dinner because when his son was born, he put a football in the crib and said, My son's going to win the Heisman trophy. That's not a bad prediction, was it, for Al? I wonder what Al thought about today's game here in Cincinnati. Well, the, here comes Kenny Anderson, a 16 year veteran, part of that quarterback class of 71 that produced people like. Jim Plunkett, Dan Pastorini, Joe Theismann, Lynn Dickey, Archie Manning. 
Plumley Plunkett. He still starts for the Raiders, and Ken Anderson remains active in the league. Anderson, a product of Augustana College in Illinois, and yesterday they won another championship in NCAA Division III football, a fourth year in a row that Augustana's won. Yeah, that's nice. That's pretty. Cody Risen congratulating the, the player they call the kid in Cleveland. Bernie Kosar just turned 23. Offensive, Offensive line dominated today. That's what he said, and he's absolutely correct. To get the home field through the playoffs, the Browns now have to beat San Diego next Sunday at Cleveland Stadium. If they do, they'd finish at 12 and 4, and they'd have home field advantage through the AFC playoffs. And I'm sure the Browns hope that the weatherman cooperates. They want no 60 degree balmy December Sundays next week. They want as miserable and as bad a weather as you can think of in Cleveland. made at the 50 yard line the Marty Schottenheimer and his Cleveland coaches and the team with accolades uh, pouring in after this great performance today a 34 to 3 lead assistant coaches with the Cleveland Browns are Dave Adolph Bill Cower Charlie Davis Lindy Infante Richard Mann Howard Mudd Tom Olabadati Joe Pendry Tom Pratt Dave Redding and Darvin Wallace that's Bill Cower with the hat on, the special teams coach. He's unbelievable, and there's a kickoff going. He's running up and down the sidelines. Kenny Anderson doing it just like he used to. But he threw about 300 to Trumpy. Steve Kreider on the reception, mechanically one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game. He was rebuilt when he came out of Augustana by Bill Walsh. And he taught him the fundamentals, and Kenny's never forgotten it. That kid has never had a shoulder problem, an elbow problem. His delivery is one of the best that the game has ever seen. Five times a Pro Bowl player for the Bengals. He has three times the NFL passing championship in his previous years, Kenny Anderson. And the lowest interception rate in NFL history. Tell you another thing about it. One of the best bad weather quarterbacks I think I've ever seen. I saw him a lot, but no bad weather ever affected Ken Anderson. Down to the two minute warning here at Riverfront Stadium. Yeah. Laughing and scratching on the Brown sideline. So they get ready for a short and happy flight back to Cleveland. So with two minutes to play, there's a timeout on the field with the score. The Browns 34 and the Bengals 3. And I'm not sure what the situation is here. The two-minute warning is not given until there's two minutes on the clock. There's 2.01 to go. I see no indication that the Bengals took the timeout. I'm not sure which we have, the two-minute warning or a Bengal timeout. Here's how dominant Cleveland's been today. Think about this. The Bengals three points scored today came on their first possession. They fired blanks since then. Holiday greetings from Budweiser. People who bring you Budweiser wish you and yours the very best of everything this holiday season. The leader in long distance service now costs less. AT&T has lowered weekday and evening prices 13.8%, the largest single reduction in our history, but not the first. Since 1984, our prices overall have dropped more than 20%. Of course, you can always look to AT&T for the highest quality service. And now, see where our prices have gone. 
AT&T, the right choice. Which 35 millimeter camera took these photographs? Here are a few hints. Its autofocus system is incredibly accurate. Its ingenious lens produces images of exacting sharpness. Its range of accessories make it extremely versatile. And its film is based on a brilliant new chemistry. Which 35 millimeter is it? None. It's the amazing new Spectra system from Polaroid. Polaroid, we take your pictures seriously. Back to live action. Tim McGee of the Bengals trying an end around it. Not very successful shutdown. As the game clock is down to 150 and running, it's a doubleheader day on NBC Sports. Most of you will see the Rams and the Dolphins from Anaheim. Kansas City hooking up with the Raiders at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Seattle goes to San Diego. Cleveland, the last one here at Riverfront, September 20th, 1981. Browns have lost five of the last six overall to the Bengals. Now, let me ask you a question. Who would you pick of the, as the MVP so far today? We're going to have a, an MVP of this game. Webster Slaughter, Bernie Kosar. Uh, Kevin Mack is over 100 yards. He's been back close to 100 yards. He's been back for four weeks. I tell you, Kosar was outstanding. So were the other two. I think this this game is such a masterpiece of preparation and execution by the overall coaching staff on the team. I don't think you can pick an MVP. I think that you know not to be uh, hackneyed, but this is really a team effort. The Browns, every aspect of football, offense, defense, and special teams. You might give it to Marty Schottenheimer. Let's do. Let's do. Mac was 23 of 93. Schottenheimer definitely prepared this team to win the championship on the road. And so it is time for the most valuable player award sponsored by Budweiser. Today's MVP is Marty Schottenheimer, the coach of the Cleveland Browns and his staff and his players from Budweiser, a contribution to the United Way on behalf of all the MVP selected in today's games. Well deserved, well executed, and the Browns have broken a four game losing streak here in Riverfront Stadium and have won seven of their last foot eight football games. That's going to do it. It is official now but it was in the books long ago from who was going to win standpoint. Thirty four to three the Cleveland Browns win the AFC Central Division title for a second straight year and the Cincinnati Bengals who came into this game favored to win and now in deep trouble from a playoff standpoint they'll close against the New York Jets next Sunday here while Schottenheimer and his Browns go back to Cleveland to take on San Diego another victory there would give Cleveland the home advantage in the AFC playoffs certainly a dis disappointing offensive performance by the Bengals Here's Bernie Kosar talking to his former teammate Eddie Brown but the Cleveland defense and the preparation of this football team made it a Cleveland Brown day from beginning to end. Thanks for the help in the booth to NBC statistician Ross Shannerman to Bill Schwarborg as we right now are down to the limit for Cincinnati. They've got to win next week and then hope we'll be coming back to Cincinnati right after this as the final number Cleveland 34 Cincinnati 3. Give 110 percent and expect it from everyone, everything. Spisek antiprismer gives 110 percent. Why? It's the most powerful protection you can get. Nothing fights wetness and odor better. Glides on dry, lasts all day. That's 110 percent protection. Speed stick antiperspirant, the wide stick. That's your edge. By Menon. Why are you in and out of bed, hating your cold, wondering how many sneezes you sneezed? <laughs> Looking for something to do until you can rest. Trying to be brave. Wishing you had a nickel for every cough. <laughs> Spending the night with your cold, waiting for relief that never comes. Why? When there's NyQuil, the nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head, fever. So you can rest medicine. From Vicks, of course. Back at Cincinnati, the Cleveland Browns have just defeated the Cincinnati Bengals 34-3. 
And this was one of the most important Cleveland wins in a long time. Not only did they show up a second straight AFC Central Division title, but they won on the road when they were an underdog, and now they put themselves in position with another win next week to have the all-important home advantage in the upcoming playoffs. And they were one good-looking team today, Trump. Don, they didn't just win. They dominated the Cincinnati Bengals. They paid no attention to the stats the Bengals accumulated last week against New England, came out here, played their game, took the Bengals out of it. I repeat, the Bengals scored on their first drive, three points. That was it for the day. What about Cincinnati now? After a 600-yard offensive game, or almost 600 a week ago against New England, they come out, as you said, fired blanks all day, and they've got to win against the Jets next week. Nobody might win that game. Well, one week they're great. The next week they're average at best. Start your new year out right with NBC Sports coming your way January 1st with the Rose Bowl. Then it's down to Miami for the primetime extravaganza, the Orange Bowl. Then the national championship game in the Fiesta Bowl.